Uh, I'm here. I'm just fucking changing a billion settings because this has driven me fucking insane. So give me one fucking second. Changing this to 1080 fucking P at least. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's about to fucking crash, isn't it? Alright. Why isn't this fucking deciding to work? I have no idea. I just hate fucking doing this shit on the fly sometimes. God damn. Alright, well at least this works. Can you guys hear me? Alright, perfect. Perfect. Oh, fucking crap, dude. Finally. Fucking wants to work for some goddamn reason. I, don't, I have no idea why this doesn't fucking want to... Maybe deactivating and activating it again? <laughs> well, fuck me. Is it, uh... Okay, wait a minute. Slip that out. Slip it back in. Maybe it works. Oh, there it is. It fucking works, finally. God damn. I can take that out. Whew! Well, let me tell you, boys. Let me tell you. Never wanted to blow my fucking brains out than it is today. But uh, we got the whole thing working. So as you can see, this is my uh, Linux uh, system right here. And of course, only some of it is working. Uh, only some of it. I still got a <laughs> fucking, um, let's see, uh, mirror image. Oh, this is going to look like shit. Hmm. Let me add a, let me add a, let me add a face cam to this. Uh, copy. Uh, paste. Where's the paste? Preview scaling. Screenshot. Paste reference. There we go. Then I can just fucking do this. And we're pretty golden. All right. You guys ready to install fucking uh, Linux? You guys ready to do the little Linuxy Linux? You guys ready to bring the pain? You guys ready to re-image an entire fucking system tonight? Because I'm ready. I'm fucking beyond ready. So, first thing I need is I need my Google Docs full of notes on Arch Linux install again. Just because uh, there's a couple things that I miss. But all right. Okay, let's wipe the system. So, I already have the flash drive available. Again, if I didn't fucking misplace it. <laughs> Let me just see where it is real quick. Uh... Am I the Prince of Pain? I'm the Prince of fucking hurting myself mentally over this fucking shit. Hold on. Where's the uh, flash drive that I have for this nonsense? Uh, keep it around somewhere here. It is It is in my possession. I just need to fucking locate it. Man, this is a real unprofessional looking thing. I'm up there XQCing the entire situation. Oh, there it is. All right. First things first. You want to make sure you have your fucking Arch Linux install ready. So I don't need to explain how to do this. Belena Etcher that shit. You know, Rufus it. Just get yourself a USB drive or whatever. It could be Ubuntu. It could be Gamer OS. It could be fucking, you know, you know, diddle my asshole OS. I don't really care what you use. I'm, I'm going to go with Arch Linux because uh, Arch Linux is uh, just really modifiable, okay? It's not like I have, you know, some other fucking distro community pretty much managing thing everything for me the downside of it is if something fucks up <laughs> it's all on me chief uh, but we're gonna plug this in we're gonna see does it show linux is it all about linux let's see uh, pc is it all is it all linux here uh it definitely does seem like it is linux so let me just let me just make sure things are kind of fucking backed up it's arch let me just make sure a lot of shit is backed up here real quick. Let me move that out of the way. Uh, it is all backed up, perfect. Okay, so now that it's done, let's kill the computer and let's restart. And hopefully it works for all of you. So let me do a full system reboot, restart, and let's get down to work. Who's messaging? Oh, don't care. 
Don't fuck up. Trust me. I'm not. I'm not gonna fuck up. My pseudo password is. Uh, my pseudo password is tickle my bunghole. All right. So you're not seeing anything, and that's because I'm rebooting from the BIOS. BIOS. You know, however you want to fucking pronounce it. And we are booting right into my. Uh, where the fuck is it? Flash drive. Here we go. So you should be able to get a signal somewhere now. Uh, if Linux doesn't fuck up. Let's see what it's doing. Is it giving any signal out? It is certainly not giving a fucking signal. Jesus Christ, the install is not. Oh well. I'm sure that can be uh, fixed. Huh. Oh, dude. Dude! Is it really not going to output a fucking signal over here? Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. That is some fucking horse shit. No, I'm reinstalling to re-image the entire thing, give it a clean little setup. How the fuck do I... <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe. Maybe. I can fucking do one of these. Can I cause it to, like, initialize across the board? No, I cannot cause it to initialize across the fucking board. However, I'm gonna do something that is unfucking precedented. Not really. I'm gonna I'm gonna edit with lag. How's that? How's that for the audience? I'm gonna edit with some fucking lag in the mix. So, wait a minute. Let me do a uh, power off. Ugh, not a big, not that big of a deal. Whew. Gen Z canceling Mr. Potato Head? I expect that from people that don't do shit with their life. Okay, let's disconnect all these display ports. God damn, this one's stuck in like a fucking virgin. Jesus Christ. All right, there you go. So it technically should still be an NVIDIA card. Oh, dude, I can do the most janky shit in the fucking world. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh man, I can really do some jank sauce. Oh, fuck, wait. I can really do something fucking janky right now. Uh, I know this has a pass-through. Let me grab a, uh... <gasps> oh my god! We can do that. Hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up, chief. Hold the fuck up. What is this? HDMI out to this? Yes! Okay, we got, we're cooking with gas. We're cooking with the gas, Celine boys and girls. Okay, so first we're going to boot into this shit. Yes, my install medium. And uh, I am going to have some notes up for me right here. So let it boot up real quick. And once we're in here, we're in here. Why do I like Linux so much? Because it's a superior operating system and I use it for a lot of my shit. Let's see, there's one error and oh that's my Bluetooth device. Okay, that doesn't that's not an important factor at the fucking moment. Alright, login prompts. So now that we're in Linux, let's clear this bullshit. We need to check if uh, I have a EFI var. I think it's FF. No, fuck, what is it? Uh what is the what is the EF oh yeah, it's EFI var dash L. Okay, we're booted in perfectly. This means that I'm in Eufy, which is like fucking superior shit. All right, if you're not in Eufy boot, you're doing it wrong. You're in like old people boot. All right, we don't do old people shit around here, okay? We do it like new. Uh, so, uh, this is like really boring for fucking YouTube, so I'm doing it right here to sort of, you know, not freak out the audience a little bit. Let me just open up a, what is that thing? Where, where, where's Twitch TV? Uh... I cannot join Discord, friend. I'm in the middle of something fucking wild. God, shut up! I fucking hate this stupid fucking phone, dude. God. Fucking insanity. It's just like... I need it for the fucking notes. It's like, dog, I don't fucking want to play that... I don't want to play fucking games right now, dude. All right, let me see. Ping, um... Uh, ping Yahoo right now. Let's see if Yahoo's responding... Okay, so now that we have a network connection, we're pretty fucking good. The reason why I pinged was so that we can have a network 
and uh, all that all that good fucking gravy, right? That's why we did it. That's uh, that's how mafia fucking works. So now that we have internet, we know that we're on Eufy, we're pretty fucking good to go. So let's format our drives. Now this is where everyone fucking fails. They're like, this is really hard. I'm gonna show you. So you see, these are all hard drives. So SDA, SDB, SDC, SDD, right? So SDD is actually our boot drive. You can see where it says slash run arch ISO slash boot mount. That's our fucking, that's our, that's our, that's our, uh, that's our install drive. Now, you can also tell from how big the thing is. So you know how it says SDD, 848, and then 1, and 14.9 gigs. That shit, that, that's like, that's basically the total, like, drive size. Now, what gets really fucking confusing is when you look at SDA, SDB, and SDC. Now, you have a way to figure out which drive this is. So let's assume that you fucking know. Uh, let's assume that for a second that you know, right? Like, what, what drive you're... Let's assume that... Uh, you know that you have this brand of a drive that you want to install to, right? Because it's not fucking easy isolating it, all right? The way that you're going to do it is I think it's like a HD Parm, and then you do dash I, and you do slash dev, and then you do slash, say, SDB. So the reason why I did that was at the top line, it says model equals Samsung SSD 860 QVO. So that's the drive I'm going to be using to install. I know the SDA is another drive. I know SDC is a different drive. So I know SDB is what I want to do. Now, this is where it's very important. You do not want to fucking do the next steps and fuck up SDA, SDC, SDB. You need to be very fucking careful, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to zap the drive to completely clear it out. So we're going to do CG disk. We're going to do a slash dev slash SDB right so when you oh that's not what we would do not cg disk yet well i think the uh i think it's is it no it's g disk that does it cg disk is for partitioning so you want to do g disk dev sdb now right here it's going to tell you the partition table scan so you've got a protective mbr this has an actual os in it so now what you want to do is you want to press x for expert mode uh z for zap right which is where we're going to wipe out the drive right all the gpt partitions everything so hit yes it's going to be like, are you want to, are you sure? Blanking it? Yes. So now that you've done this, if you do LSBLK, you can see that SDB is completely empty. It has nothing to it. There's no partition or whatever. So let's get down to actually partitioning it. Do CG disk dev SDB for the drive we're using. This is going to give you a little fucking warning. It's going to tell you there's, it's a damaged disk, all that bullshit. It's fine. So now you have free space. So here's where we're going to start partitioning, right? Now, the way that we're going to do it, is the way that people do it for Linux is like you you either have like a uh, a home drive, uh, you have like root and home separator. We're gonna keep them separated because we're not fucking potatoes, all right. We're not fucking troglodytes. We're gonna keep our things separated, okay? All right. That's what we're gonna fucking do. All right. So uh, hit new. Uh, it's gonna tell you first sector. Hit enter for automatic. Now this is our boot drive. Now, this is a little overkill, but I'm going to give it 1,024, uh, which is one gig, right? Megabytes. So M, capital M, lowercase i, capital B. So we're going to give this, and it's going to ask you for a certain code to tell you what type of partition we're doing. For a boot, especially EFI, it's EF00. So hit enter, and it's going to tell you the partition name. Type in boot. So now you've got an EFI system partition for booting. Now, there, it's always going to give you 1,007 kilobytes. I swear to God, I had no idea what the fuck this was until I realized this is like protective MBR location, I think. Uh, but anyways, not important. Go down to 930 gigs, the rest of your free space. Hit enter again. First sector, always enter. And the next thing you want to do is you want to make swap, right? So everyone that I've ever talked to has no fucking idea what Linux is. Says, you don't need swap, uh, which is bullshit. You always need swap space, right? Now, since I have 64 gigs of RAM, I'm probably never gonna fucking run out of RAM. Let's be real, okay? However, I'm still gonna give myself swap space. So now I get to choose. Do I wanna give myself 64 gigs of RAM space? This would allow me to hibernate my system, but I'm not really fucking doing that. It, basically, your swap partition is like a Windows page file. So if you ever run out of your RAM, like if I run out of 64 gigs, and I don't have swap space, it's gonna start killing all the programs that I have in order to start using my RAM. 
But if I have swap space, it'll take the programs that aren't so important and just take them from the memory, RAM, and throw them into the swap partition. This is like a Windows page file. You'll want to give yourself something. Uh, I know that a swap file is better in, in certain ways, but I actually just stick with the partition itself. Uh, I know that it's easier to modify the swap file, but this is sort of like a one and done deal. So I'm gonna give myself like, uh, I would say 16 gigabytes of swap space. I think that's a fair amount. It's still overkill, but I'm not gonna give a whole 64 gig partition to the system. Uh, I'm just doing a one and done sort of partition. So I'm gonna do this right here and it's gonna ask for hex code. Hex code is always 8200 for swap space. So do that and title this swap. Now we're gonna make the rest of our partition. So here's where you're gonna do your root partition. This is where your operating system and all of that stuff is really gonna be sitting. Now Arch Linux says you can give yourself 20 gigs, but I always run out of that shit a lot. So I'm gonna give myself 35 gigs this time because 35 gigs I feel like with a terabyte of space is plenty for it. So we're gonna do enter for first sector. We're gonna do 35 GIB, hit enter. And here it says uh, 8300, just give that enter because it's a Linux file system. And we're gonna call that root. So now go down here, the rest of your space, hit new, hit enter, hit enter to use the rest of the space available, hit enter for 8300 and call this the home partition. So now we've got four partitions. We have the boot partition that I highlighted. We have the swap partition. We have where we're gonna install our Linux operating system too. And then we have our home partition. And the reason, so we keep this separate for one reason, right? Let's say you wanna make a backup, but your home and root partition are the same. It's pretty stupid to back up your operating system alongside your personal file. If, you're, if you have a home partition that's separate, you can back this up with relative ease without having things sort of, you know, uh, involved in the backup that really don't need to be there. It's easier to replace your fucking operating system. Separating it like this is just cleaner in general. So now that we've done all this, we're gonna go highlight, we're gonna go highlight right. Hit enter. And uh, I wanna hit yes and it's gonna write all of this shit. So operation is completed successfully. Now, one we're gonna do is we're gonna quit this out. And to show you how the partitioning happened, if you do LSBLK, oh, uh, yeah, rewrite. You can see that SDB now has SDB one, two, three, and four, corresponding with all of the, um, all of the file sizes that we gave to it. So now we've partitioned, but it's not all the way there. We have to format these drives. Uh, this isn't Linux from scratch. This is nowhere close to that. So. To do this first, we have to look at our boot drive. Now, since we're booting, what we need to do is we need to make it a FAT32 drive. That's the partition scheme we're going with. We're not gonna use anything else because we want our BIOS to detect and go into the bootloader and then boot into the operating system. So, we're gonna do make FS, all right, make file system right here, uh, .fat dash capital F32. Now, where is that gonna be? It's gonna be dev sdb1 for our boot drive, so hit enter, it just did it for it. Now we're gonna make a directory real, no, not directory yet, sorry, I'm getting way too ahead of myself. We're gonna make the swap partition. So do MK swap, uh, and then you wanna do slash dev slash SDB2, right? So once you've done that, it set up the swap, but you need to enable it. So do swap on dev SDB2. So now we have swap on. So. Now it's time to make the rest of it. So for Linux, we use a partition scheme called extended four. Uh, so what we're gonna do is make fs.ext4, ext and we're gonna do dev sdb3. So now that's done, uh, dev sdb contains an extension for file system last mounted on March 1st, 2020. Uh, did I enter the right one? sdb3. Eh, if it does this, you just hit yes. It's not the end of the fucking world. It's just kind of a weird error. Uh, yeah, go for it. It's not the end of the world. Uh, I think something must have fucked up somewhere. I've gotten this error before, and I'm trying to rack my brain why it happened, but uh, I don't think it's going to cost that much of a t you know fucking problem. Anyways, do LSBLK, and you can see now that these are partitions again. One of them says swap, right? So swap means that we've enabled swap like good little boys. Now it's time to do a lot of the mounting. So now we're gonna be mounting the folders we're gonna to use to initially install Linux. So now you're gonna do mount slash dev sdb3, right? And you're gonna mount it to slash mnt. This is mounting what? Our root drive. So we're gonna mount it. 
Now we're going to make a directory, all right, and we're going to make the directory mnt boot. Then we're going to make another directory and we're going to call it mnt slash home for our home drive. Now we're going to mount dev sdb sdb1 and we're going to mount that to boot drive. Why? Because we're mounting it to the bootload. This is where we're going to install all, all of our bootloaders and everything. So mount that. Then you want to do mount dev sdb4, uh, which is our home directory, the biggest one that we have, the home partition. And we're going to mount that to, you guessed it, mnt slash home. So now that's done, all right, it's time to get our mirror list ready. So big thing that I can teach you, always do backups. If you're going to modify system files and important files, you want to back up as much as you can. So you're going to do CP for copy, all right? We're going to do etc. Pacman D. Now, this is Pacman in this case is Arch's version of the software distribution. If you're on Ubuntu, you may have ever heard of something called apt-get, which is their version. Uh, on Fedora, I think it's called yum and DNF. These are just different package insta installers, right? So for Arch, it's all about Pacman. Now, with Pacman, what we're going to be doing over here is we're going to do Pacman D, we're going to do mirror list, and we're going to back that up. So with the space over here, we're going to do etc. pacman d mirror list dot backup. So what does this command do? It copies mirror list to another file, but mirror list dot backup. So hit enter, and bam, we're done. To show you what it looks like, if you do uh, pacman d, you can see that within the folder is the mirror list and the mirror list backup. So that's just command line backing up. It's kind of like right clicking a file and pasting it in the same directory with a different name. That's just what we did except in a command line. So anyways, now that that shit's done, it's time to go do sudo nano. But in this case, you don't have to do nano. Uh, you can just do nano because it says root at arch iso. Sudo is to do root commands, but we're already in root anyway. So do nano, etc. mirror list. Not mirror list, hold on a second. Um, oh, I don't have bash completion. Hold on, nano, etc. mirror list dot con. Where's the mirror list? Hold on a second. Uh, what the fuck? What am I doing? Oh, wait. Fuck, I know what I'm doing. Uh, you want to do nano etsy pacman d mirror list? Now, in the mirror list, okay, this is what Arch Linux contacts to uh, basically, like, this is the servers you're hitting to download your software, right? Now, you see how we have a fuck ton of these? Not all of these servers are useful. Not all these servers are what we want. Even though that this was created by Arch Linux uh, in Reflector very recently, we want to make this even better. We want less mirrors, but healthier mirrors. So uh, we're going to back out of this. Now there's a tool called Rank Mirrors, but as you can see, we don't actually have that tool. So we need to install this Rank Mirrors. It used to be part of the install, but for some reason, Arch removed it. So I'm going to show you how to install a program. Do Pacman. But no, actually, better case. If you were on your desktop, you do sudo pacman dash s. And in the first case, you want to do sy because we haven't updated initially. So uh, you want to do this first to download all of these uh, databases. Then you want to do sudo pacman dash capital s, just s. And you want to do pacman contrib in this case. I know this is the package I need. So here you see that it found the package. You hit y, and it downloads all of its dependencies. Bam, we're installed. Uh, by the way, I'm not ending this just to the Arch Linux install. We're actually going to build my whole fucking computer. So just understand. Now, in this case, all right, we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go back into that, like, uh, fucking mirror list. And as you can see, everything is uncommented. So to show you how a computer works, if you comment, basically you add that pound sign in the beginning, the hashtag for you Twitter users, it makes that invisible to the system. We're not ch rooting it. We haven't installed our Arch Linux install yet. We're installing it. Uh, so this makes it invisible. But because it's all removed, Arch sees all these servers. So that's all fine. Now, you want to do rank mirrors, which is rank mirrors, right? Dash n6, so the top six best servers. And what we're going to do to make our life easier is we're going to make this look into our backup. And we're going to then using one arrow key, copy all that over to our main mirror list. So etc. pacman d mirror list. And we're going to hit enter. 
And as you can see, it's just blinking. There's no response. What's happening right now is Arch Linux is now sitting through our system and it's basically calculating every single one of those mirrors and seeing the best one. So you can kind of sit over here for a little bit. This is gonna be shorter than what it initially was. They used to give you every fucking server they had. So this process would take like 15 fucking minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> but since we don't have a lot of servers, uh, it's probably gonna take like 30, maybe a minute max. So uh, this is a quicker entire scenario. Do I recommend switching to Manjaro from Windows? Uh, Manjaro is basically just Arch Linux without all of this bullshit. But uh, I would say it's it's a good system to switch to. I use Manjaro. Uh, I do have some issues. The reason I use Arch Linux is every time I deal with any form of Linux, like Ubuntu, like Fedora, like uh, Manjaro, they always have fucking problems uh, with NVIDIA cards or proprietary things. And it's, it's just annoying. All right, I just don't deal with it. I'm gonna show you how to game on Linux, actually. I will show you how to do it. Uh, serious thoughts on Gentoo. Gentoo's great if you're willing to deal with like fucking compiling everything. On a modern system like mine, not that big of an issue, but uh, it, it definitely, like unless you really are streamlining everything, it's fine. But for the most part, I don't really get down with it. Uh, our Arch is good enough for what I do. So now that we've done all this, it's time to install Linux. So. How long do you think the actual installation of the Linux system will take? Just wager in the chat real quick. How long do you think it's going to take to just basically install Linux? Somebody said 10 minutes, an hour, 5 minutes, 30 seconds. I'll show you. So here's how we're going to do it. Since we have all of those things mounted, if you do LSBLK, you'll see how SDB1 is mounted to boot, our boot drive. SDB2 is a swap. SDB3 is the actual mount root. SDB4 is mount slash home, right? So, because we have all of it mounted, let's do packstrap, which is how we're going to install Linux for the initially, dash i, and now we're going to do base, base devel, Linux, and Linux dash headers. Uh, I believe that won't really be necessary too much, but I do it anyways as good practice. Base is not a directory. <laughs> what? What the fuck? Oh, I'm a re I'm a 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 reject when it comes to this. Caught myself flipping there. Uh, you want to do packstrap i slash mnt. Hit enter. Watch this. It's gonna ask you what repository cores. Just hit enter. It's gonna ask you what do you want? Making it CPIO, booster, drag it, just hit enter. So here we have to download 333 megabytes. So this is how long the install process takes. Hit Y, and bam, there you go. See, people would look at you like you're a hacker man right now. And uh, <laughs> not really. It's just, it's basically downloading a bunch of packages and we're installing and that's pretty much what it is. When I use newer Arch Linux ISOs to install it, when I install it at the end, when I boot to the normal system, the LAN connection doesn't work. Is my problem or Arch problem? Uh, it's probably because you didn't install the, the network, uh, appropriately. You'll probably see it in this. Uh, sometimes you might have a network device that's a little fucking out there. Usually some laptops may, but I'm going to show you how to get it done for the most part as we get in. But yeah, it's just downloading all the shit like GCC and everything. So people will look at you like you're hacking the government right here, but really you're just downloading fucking files. Why would I install Arch Linux from scratch? So the reason I use Arch is like I said earlier, uh, I install exactly what I want, okay? Sometimes Manjaro thinks too ahead of it and sometimes they install a driver that I don't need. Sometimes they install things that I just don't want, period. The reason I use Arch is that it really is just a system that I can design 100% myself. That's what it is. So now it's gonna check the key ring and bam, there it is, installation. And we are fucking done? I think we might have to do an initial uh, init CPIO. Yeah, there it is. It's just doing the initial init CPI. You can see like fucking, what is going on over here? Possible missing firmware for fucking everything. Jesus Christ. What is that? I'm sure we'll figure it out later. Let me just see uh, warning about old Perl modifications, setting location, setting locale fail, please. Falling back to standard locale, that is fine. So we've actually just installed everything. I need to check some of these errors real quick. Yeah, just missing firmware for some modules, but we'll get that all fucking handled in. So now we have it done. We've actually installed the actual system. So let's do a genf stab. 
this is basically setting up those initial drives uh, so we can actually, you know, have Arch recognize them as we're going in. So do genf stab dash u dash capital U dash p and you want to do slash mnt, all right? And then you want to do a double arrow drop into mnt etsy and then the f stab. F stab is basically the, the file we're using to store all of the drives that Linux should be recognizing. So hit enter. We have generated the F stab. To show you what an F stab is, you can go to uh, you can go to MNT Etsy F stab and Nano. And basically, Linux has calculated every single partition I had, right? So SDB three, and it's got all the UUID. So see how it calculates the user the UUID. It calculated where it's mounted normally, extension for RW, rel time, all that stuff. So this is basically what we're sitting at. Now, let's fucking go down even further and actually load in to our new installation. So we're going to do arch ch root and we're going to do slash mnt. Now we're in our new installation, boys and girls. Now it's time to fucking modify this. So we're going to do nano. Etsy, oh, not Babby, what the fuck? First things first, since we're in our new installation, Nano doesn't exist. <laughs> you see that? Nano does not exist. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do sudo pacman-s, y, you know, update all this package base and everything, make sure it's there. sudo pacman-s, nano, and bash completion. So hit enter, and uh, we are now in. We have nano available. So that's how we install programs. I don't use Vim because I don't really like Vim. I, I prefer Nano myself, just my personal belief, my personal thing, so that's what I do. So now we wanna do Nano, Etsy, Locale, Gen. Now this is where we set system locale. Now you're gonna have to find out what locale is in your area, but I know that I'm in nus.utf-8. So we're gonna do Control W to start finding. We're gonna do nus for me, and bam, right there, nus.utf-8, space utf-8. So close. So we're going to uncomment that so Arch can see it. We're not going to uncomment anything else. We're only going to uncomment this. Now, Arch Linux will look into this file and say, this shit doesn't exist except that one line. <laughs> so it enter, exit out of it, save it, and bam, you're done. Now it's time to do, now it's time to generate the locale. So you're going to type locale.gen. It looks through the file. That's the only thing I see. <laughs> and it generates that. I'm not an IT engineer. That's a whole different thing. Uh, cybersecurity is my thing. So now it's time to echo shit. So you want to do echo. Uh, echo, basically, we're just going to copy whatever echo. We're going to echo a certain line into a file. So we're going to do echo. And we're going to do capital lang. You know, language in this case. N. And this is very important. Do not fuck up like this. I have fucked up and it's caused me some headaches. So do n underscore us. So whatever it said your locale was, remember it. So n underscore us, right? Dot utf. I have it always written over here so I don't fuck up. Right there, bam. Uh, and copy. I just, I, it's not a script. I just have like fucking all of my, uh, all of my like, by important things that I can't fuck up, just like in line, like nusutf-8, just so I don't fuck it up. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean. And then you want to copy that into your Etsy locale, not gen, locale conf. So hit enter, and then you want to do the uh, export, right? Lang. All right. In this case, not that you can't do that. Lang. Oh wow, you can't even do a capital export export lang it's literally the no fuck up list like you have to like fucking i even though i know exactly what i'm typing i like triple check it so it's like always n utf negative eight so i always i always do that because if i fuck this up it's just gonna fucking annoy me so hit enter and uh we should be good so we set our language we've done everything what's next is we're probably gonna set up things like fucking uh we want to do time now. So the way that time works is we have uh, we have basically different zones. So to show you what I'm looking at, let's do ls user share time zone. Why is it not? Oh, not, not zone info. Uh, if you got if you want anything, I'm going to show you what I'm actually reading as well alongside this. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to link something in the chat real quick of what I'm reading alongside. Install 
wiki. Oh man, I can't type on this book. Uh, yeah, installation guide. Uh, this is what you want to be reading alongside. Don't watch a video or anything. This is what you want to read. It's always up to date. That's what I'm looking through for all these uh, extra deals. But that's what we're doing. Uh, it's not a guide that I'm following, but I just keep it up there because sometimes, and this is very important. So the reason why I do this all from memory mostly, but the reason why that guide is important is during the install process, sometimes they change a couple things, right? Maybe directories or whatever. So even though I have it in memory, if they change a directory and, I, and I'm remembering something else, you know, it's not, it's not always common. I can always refer back to that guide because it's always up to date and you can you know figure out what they changed. Because sometimes that does happen. Like I told you earlier, they used to have that rank mirrors in, then they took it out for some fucking reason. But in that you can you can figure it out. So that's that's an important thing. That's the one thing you probably uh, wanna just fucking have, right? Uh, so anyways, zone info. And if you hit enter, you can see how they got like every country, right? They've got Africa, America, Antarctica, Ar Arctic, Asia, Atlantic, Australia, Brazil, Canada, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a uh, symbolic link here. So let's do LNS and we want to do user share zone info. And I know that I'm Canada, so it's Canada. And I know that I'm Eastern, so Canada, Eastern, and there's nothing much more. So you want to do like uh, one arrow and you want to copy that into your Etsy and local time. So now that we've got that set, you know, we're pretty fucking good. So now that we've got our local time, now it's time to do hardware clock. So you do HW clock uh, dash sys tohc dash uh, utc. Hit enter, bam, we're done. So now that we've got all of that shit done, it's time to now create the host name for our device. Our host name is like the overall uh, name for the system, right? Like our host name. So what we're gonna be doing over here is we're gonna do uh, echo, and I'm gonna call this the overlord. So echo overlord, and you wanna do like a Etsy, the host name. God damn, dude, I haven't eaten, I need to fucking eat. So there we go, we got our host name done. And then you want to do other things. So this is where you want to enable uh, a bunch of shit. Uh, first off, actually, no, you want to do you want to do nano Etsy Pacman D. All right, no, not Pacman, Pacman.conf. And in here you want to enable uh, multi-lib. So if you want 32-bit applications, right, which there are a fair fucking bit of, uh, you want to go all the way down and you want to enable multi-lib. You see how they have two? They have multi-lib testing. Just get multi-lib. Uh, testing is like all the experimental branch, all right? If you if you want stable fucking software, don't go to the testing branch, all right? It's a bad fucking sign, all right? Don't do that. Uh, you want to close and save that, and uh, we're good. Now, this is where you want to enable things. If you have an SSD, you want to get trim support, right? So you do system CTL, which is the, uh, you know, fucking, uh, this, is, this is what it's going with. This is like Arch right there. You can get like in it. I think it's like init rd or something. No, not init rd. What's the other one? Fuck. I know system CTL is the init system we've got over here, but like, what's the other one? It's like void Linux fucking uses it. I think it's like RC or something of the sort. Shit, I'm trying to remember. Because I know this is system D. The other one is like fucking someone in the chat. Open RC. Open RC is like fucking Gen 2 shit. Uh, run it, I think, is void. Uh, but system D is what we've got over here. And I know a lot of people hate system D, but uh, it's not so bad. All right, don't fucking bitch about it. It's it's all right. So you want to do system CTL, enable something, and you want to do the fstrom timer. So it creates a sim link, and that whole service is going to be enabled. You're going to want this if your system has an SSD, and if you have a modern system, it's probably going to be a case. So now that we updated our Pac-Man with the multi-lib, it's time to actually update its directory. So we're going to do pacman-sy. And because we enabled multi-lib, everything's up to date. It just has to download the multi-lib. And for some reason, it just won't fucking do it. <laughs> I think it's... Oh, there it is. There it is. Downloaded at 24 kilobytes, boys. We're, uh, we're looking pretty good into the situation. <laughs> All right, so root password. So you do password. Just literally type that. And this is what your root password is going to be. So if you're doing things like... Uh, you know, if you're All of the stuff that we've been doing up till now would require sudo. 
sudo is what we're going to be needing so this password is going to be like your root password right uh, i would make sure it's very different from your actual username password as a security measure uh, if you want to keep it the same keep it the same think of it like your windows administrator account right this is your administrator password so enter it enter it again uh, if it doesn't show up type that's literally the case it's it's security now it's time to add a user so you can add as many as you want but i'm going to add my user account right here so we're going to do user add all right and we're going to do dash lowercase m dash g users and we're going to give it you know all of its fucking commands so we're going to give it the wheel group the storage group and also the power group power users and we're going to do dash s we're going to give it its uh, terminal. So in this case, since I only have bash, bin bash, we'll change it later. And uh, we'll give my name as Anas. So hit enter. And what? Oh, fuck. I think I screwed something up. Hold on a second. Uh, I didn't give myself the capital G after it. Fuck me. Yeah, I just saw that. Capital G for groups. Because you have to do capital G, then you have to give yourself the fucking groups. Everything is also fine. Hit enter. So we got our user now. No error, no nothing. Give your username a password. So password, uh, in my case, it's on us. So hit enter. And it's time to give that a uh, username password. So bam, we gave myself a password. Our users are now fucking made. So now that we got the users made, we're going to edit the pseudo list. So editor equal nano, because we're using nano to edit it, and call it vice pseudo. So here's your pseudoers file. Now, to make our life really fucking easy, we're gonna go do, we're gonna find percent wheel, and we're gonna uncomment this so people in the wheel group can execute commands from this, so get rid of that. And in the bottom, we're gonna make sure that uh, things like our default password are now requirements. So instead of using you know that username password, we're gonna make them use the admin password. So in this blank new line, I do defaults, and type in root pw for root password and you can save the list and close it off now that that is all fucking done we're gonna make sure that our efis are mounted okay our efi var fs is mounted so all we need to do is mount dash t efi var uh, fs efi var fs and we're gonna do slash sys firmware EFI, EFI var S, and hit enter. And if it says it's already mounted, you fucking good, chief. You fucking good. You fucking fine. You know what I mean? Now it's time to install our bootloader. How fast do you think our bootloader is going to take? Well, I'll show you. You do boot CTL and install. Now I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to blow your fucking minds. Whoa. Created all of our boot entries. What the fuck? Less than a fucking second. That was some good shit right there. That's what happens when you use fucking system deboot, boys. I don't use that grub shit. See, Manjaro uses grub. This is our fucking small bootloader right here. All right. Now, the thing with this bootloader is you got to get fucking really nitty gritty yourself. So now you want to do nano and you want to make your boot entry. So do Etsy, not Etsy, sorry. You want to do go into your boot, go into boot, go to loaders, entries, and we're going to call this... Um, Let's call it default, okay? You know, just just uh, just rip on the Fortnite kids a little bit. Uh, the Fortnite default. So default conf. So let's give this directory a title for the bootloader, right? So we're gonna do title, and we're gonna call this uh, Muda Arch Linux. All right. Now in here we're gonna lead it to a bunch of the initializations. So we're gonna do Linux. We're gonna do slash vm linux linux not vm linux vm linux dash linux. We're pointing it to basically you know Linux is fucking. We're pointing it to the kernel and it's in init ram fs. Now we're gonna do init rd right and this is just like we're gonna come back to this but I'm just setting it right now for the stage. Init uh, ram fs linux lin linux or no linux dot image right. So now that we got all this shit up. I fucked up. This is where Linus was. This is where I was screwed up. So you want to exactly type it like I've done right here. Okay? Let's get down to it. So control X, save, and call it a day. Now, interestingly enough, kiddos, you also want to make sure that your microcode patches are up to running. What is a microcode patch? Well, for certain processors, in order to get this shit running, 
you need uh, you you need all their security updates and their fucking stability and all that bullshit in their in, in all of it. Now, microcodes you could normally update through the BIOS, but in, in Linux you can apply all of this shit during the boot process. So since I have an Intel CPU, we want to do sudo not sudo sudo pacman s. I'm just gonna do sudo to make it easier for you all to understand. Intel dash u code. I believe AMD has its own u code, but I'm an in, I'm an Intel guy, so I'm installing the Intel microcode. Uh, we are currently downloading this fucking shit at 100. Okay, it's ramping up a little bit. It's ramping up, but we've installed the microcode. Now I think AMD has a fucking microcode, so let me see. Let me see AMD u code. Yes, AMD does in fact have its own microcodes, but we're not going to install that because I don't have an AMD fucking card, right? Okay, you understand that? Now we're going to go back to that bootloader directory. Before init rd, okay, you want to make sure you do the absolute fucking smart thing and do init rd, and you make sure Linux calls onto that Intel U code dot img. You don't do this, bad fucking things are going to happen. Now, if you're a Linux guy, you'll probably have heard of a name called Glorious Fucking Egg Roll. And he's come up with the greatest fucking scheme, the greatest command line entry I've ever seen during this shit, okay? All right, you all ready? You'll want to use the microcode. Use the microcode shit. I promise it'll make life a little bit fucking easier, okay? Jesus Christ. So, this will boot. However, what happens if Linux decides to fuck up or something changes in the hardware level and your partitions get a little moved around in the hardware scheme, right? A little different. May not be so common, but we're gonna make sure Linux, we're gonna grab Linux by the fucking testicles every boot process and tell it that's the drive you're going to go behind. So let me just Google this man's fucking uh, command. He has like something here, it's in a video. I have it saved, but I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. So, here it is. I've got it going. We're going to type in echo, quotations, options, and this has to be very fucking on point. Root equal part, UUID in capitals, equal Dolan's, all right, Dolan, bracket, cur cur not curly brackets, normal brackets, all right, we're going to do BLK ID, block ID, dash s part uuid dash o uh, value for dev sdb3 that's what our root drive so we want this to always boot into that root drive it's not going to boot into home it ain't going to fucking boot anywhere else it's only going to boot to that drive right there okay that motherfucking drive is the one and then we're going to do rw and uh you know apostrophe double arrows because double arrows are very fucking important okay double arrows are what we're going to be using to add a line to the file if you do a single arrow it literally will just overwrite the entire fucking file so that's why we have these different arrow schemes this is to add a new line okay and then you want to add it to where our bootloader so bootloader entries default.com hit enter you might be like what the fuck did that do well Echo was basically us, you know, echoing this line right here. So apostrophe, options, root. Now this whole part UUID was so that we can get the UUID for the part, right? The partition ID itself. That will never change, okay? That's like a fucking fingerprint, all right? We gave it the block ID of that specific partition. No matter what, that will never change. Now, if we do nano uh, Etsy, no, no, Etsy boot loader entries default you can see that this is the line it added it will always boot to this motherfucking line boys it will always boot to this line we are literally telling it motherfucker you will never boot anywhere else but this partition id and it's very important okay it's going to save your fucking brain if something happens very important so now that we got all of this fucking done it's time to check if we have a working network connection. So for the person earlier who talked about network, I'll show you this much. If you type an IP link, all right, it'll give you all of this shit, all right? You can do IP adder, 
it'll give you, you know, more. But IP link gives you a bunch of extra shit. So you've got LO, which is localhost loopback. Uh, that's not important. Eno2 is the ethernet port that I have connected to the internet. That's what I need. WLAN, WLAN 0 is basically uh, is basically our good old-fashioned fucking uh, wireless card. Now, I know that you guys have seen my fucking MAC address. It's all cool and dandy. I really don't fucking care. Uh, that may or may not be spoofed. It's up for you to figure it out. I don't really give a shit. I'm not sitting over here trying to fucking, you know... This isn't the days of PSP where everyone had to hide their fucking MAC address shit. Uh, I don't care. It's not that big a deal. All right, you know what I mean? Uh, fun fact, by the way. I'm going to tell you guys something right now. MAC addresses don't really mean a whole lot anymore. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Every fucking device spoofs them. <laughs> iPhones, Androids, most laptops, everything out there, those motherfucking devices have just built-in Mac spoofers. And it's getting to a point where that doesn't even fucking help anymore. Uh, this is not like giving away my IP address. You really cannot fucking do anything with the MAC address. Okay? You're really, you're really not going to fucking do anything with it. You can't DDoS it. You can't do whatever. If you think that you're going to commit a crime in my name using my MAC address, uh, there's a million other fucking fingerprints you're leaving behind. And... Uh, if you think if you think all the feds do is use the MAC address to figure out the trust me it doesn't fucking help whatsoever the MAC address means jack fucking shit it's fuck and all so it really doesn't matter anybody that says they're gonna hack you with the MAC address uh, they're a fucking Roblox hacker okay I'm just putting that one out there does that does that does that does that ease someone does that ease some tension I hope so I hope so anyways back to the fun part we're going to do sudo pacman s and we're going to install dhcpcd you want to do this because it doesn't fucking come pre-installed you want to install this real fucking quick okay and then uh now you want to enable you want to enable dhcpcd which is basically going to get our dhcp lease it's going to get an ip address from the actual routers that we have to linux on boot so you want to do system ctl enable uh, and you want to do dhcpcd add eno2 dot service. Hit enter, and there you go. You've just done it. So that will now run dhcpcd on that fucking network device right there. Uh, if you don't do this, you're going to have to do this bullshit every time you boot. This is just fucking, this is what you want to do. So Linux handles it as you're booting in. So when you're picking your balls and you're getting your sandwich while your system's booting up, Linux is just there to do it, okay? Uh, it, I don't think it has DHCPCD because I don't, I don't even fucking know why. It's so stupid why they don't just keep that as a default because <laughs> you need it. So now you want to do sudo pacman-s. I hate interchanging pseudo like that. It just makes me look like a fucking idiot, but I do it because in a teaching manner, it's better. Uh, you want to install network manager, okay? This is a GUI tool, okay? So if you don't want to fuck around with this, and trust me, look, I love the command line like every other fucking Linux nerd out there, but Linux users are like fucking vegans, okay? They won't shut the fuck up about how much they know about the command line. Command line's great if you know what you're doing. But if there's a GUI tool that's lightweight and it can do your fucking job, just do it, okay? Jesus Christ. Hit enter and install all of this. I mean, I'm telling you, Lin Lin Arch users, this may seem overly complicated, but like when you've done it like 30 fucking times, it's really not that bad. This is basically a Linux install, except you're doing every step yourself. Most other Linux installs, you just hit next a bunch of times and it does all of this for you, okay? So anyways, once you've installed Network Manager, it's time for you to do systemctl, enable network uh, manager uh, service. And this is this is actually really fucking brain dead. So to install Network Manager, you need to do it all lowercase, but to enable it, the N and the M have to be capital. I don't know fucking why. It's so stupid. It's I hate it when they mix this lowercase and well, it's just insanity. So now that Network Manager is fucking enabled, we need to make sure that uh, we need to make sure that uh, I think at this point our Linux headers need to be there. So 
we need to install our graphic card. Because if we don't do it before we boot up, it's going to cause a bad time. So each graphic card has its thing. If you have an AMD graphic card, uh, there's going to be like 10 less fucking steps you need. Right? If you have an NVIDIA card, whoo boy, that's going to be fucking it. That's, that's, we're going to, I'm going to show you all the shit you need to do. Okay. So first off you need your headers. Okay. Because what we're going to be using is something called DKMS, which is the dynamic kernel. What is, what is, what is it? It's like dynamic kernel fucking, it's a dynamic kernel module. What the fuck is D it's dynamic kernel module fucking somebody, somebody's going to Google it for me. No, it's literally not as easy as fucking pass, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, this is like the foolproof fucking way. So you need the Linux headers, okay? Uh, listen, so Linux has two th li dynamic kernel module support. There we go. Or su support, I think. Or syst dynamic kernel module system might be it. Whatever. Uh, there's two versions of the NVIDIA driver, okay? There's the fucking open source driver, which... If you're in Linux, you're probably like, I love open source. It better be open source or I'm not touching it on my Linux drive. NVIDIA's proprietary is their proprietary code. So you are running, if in this fashion that I'm about to show you, you're kind of breaking the fucking Linux vegan lifestyle, which is only open source. The only reason I'm gonna use Linux's proprietary drivers is because the open source version of the driver, while it's good, it's like fucking Muhammad Ali Okay, the open, the proprietary is like Muhammad Ali, okay? The open source, you know, is like a fucking drunk, is like, is like a drunk, is like Shenmue 1, okay? All right? You know my fuck, we're the Sailor Dad, okay? With Folklift mini game, okay? That's what we're doing. Okay, because, actually, here's a better fucking analogy. The, <laughs> the mainline Linux, the mainline NVIDIA proprietary driver is like Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Great fucking game, everything. In fact, Metal Gear Solid 2, awesome game. The open source is Shenmue. Some people like Shenmue, okay? People with a fuck, people, people with, people with, you know, limited time fucking don't. People who prefer quality don't. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. So install those headers. Uh, even though the headers are already installed, I'm just going to go through it again. Uh, for the sake of it, just so it like installs. Oh my God, I'm touching my stitches. It's so gross. Yeah, they fall out. Now it's time to install the fucking NVIDIA shit. So I have my notes over here and this is literally what you're gonna want. So do sudo uh, pacman s and do NVIDIA DKMS. Now there's a normal NVIDIA, but we're gonna do the DKMS so that every time we update Linux's kernel, it'll actually update all those it'll recreate the driver for us right here uh through the dkms system which is ultimately better i don't know why this isn't a fucking default but uh this is what we're going to be doing oh you can't see it anyways okay so you want to do sudo pacman s dkms all right there's a normal nvidia driver which is fine but i personally prefer this way because it's more foolproof it like this is just a better way to handle it okay uh <laughs> I don't know why they don't make this a fucking default personally, but you want to do it this way. Now it's time to do lib glv, no, not lib G, what is it? That comes later, doesn't it? You want to do NVIDIA utils, okay? OpenCL NVIDIA, you want to do lib glvnd, okay? And now it's time to do lib32. So you want the 32 libs from the multi-lib shit, okay? This is for like 32-bit support and shit, glvnd. All right, lib32 NVIDIA utils. And you want to do lib32 and uh, OpenCL NVIDIA and then NVIDIA settings. There's a couple other fucking things that you want, but this is like sort of like the basics. So hit enter. Dependency cycle uh, will be installed before it's okay. Yeah, so that's basically Linux fixing a bunch of things up. Uh, yeah, so as you can tell that like case sensitive shit is important. Linux fixed it up for me. It said Mesa will be involved before this, 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 and that. Uh, you know, actually I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. I'll, I'll, I, I'm not gonna let Linux fuck me over on this. Let me do, what was that? Okay, yeah. I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna bother. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fucking come out with like 
you know, my ass handed to me. It's not that big of a deal. I'll just change the way that uh, that I've got it open. CL NVIDIA lib32 lib glvmd uh, lib32 NVIDIA utils lib32 open CL NVIDIA and then NVIDIA settings. Did I fuck it up? Fuck it, you know. Let's just go with it. Fuck it. I thought I thought I thought I got things in and out somewhere. Actually, wait. Does Pac-Man do that? No, it doesn't. It doesn't require it, does it? It'll. No, I'm thinking of fucking something else, dude. I'm thinking back to my fucking Ubuntu days. That what I just did was I think brain dead. That's not important. Pac-Man is way more fucking smarter and streamlined than fucking apt get. I swear to God, I think I I had the I had the fucking apt get shit in my mind. If you're if you any if any of you guys are like Ubuntu users, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Apt get while is a great system makes me want to fucking blow my brains out. I hate apt get. I used to start off from that, but Jesus Christ, man, that thing is fucking annoying. You got a fucking little raid going on from fucking Kit Boca. Shit, dude. What's up, guys? God damn, he rated with like three thousand. Jesus Christ, he ra he rated a fucking he rated an Arch Linux install stream. What a fucking this this is why I love about this is why I love about the fucking Twitch community. You know, when it comes to the computer nerd side of it, I, I hope that you I hope that you got some fucking scammers today, brother. God damn, I hope that you got some scammers like my fucking. In what is up with my download speed today? Okay. Is the art server shitting itself? <laughs> Bam! Look at that. We're installing our fucking graphic drivers. Now, people who come in thinking that I'm hacking the government, no, I'm not. This part of it is spiking my CPU up to, like, no tomorrow. You can hear the fans ramp up on my computer because it's, like, building this fucking driver and shit. It's not that big a deal. We're going to install DKMS. We're going to get it. It's going to take a while. It, ta it, ta it takes a little bit of fucking time, dude. It takes a bit of time depending on your fucking potato. If you got a potato computer, it's going it's go it's to be a little bit. <laughs> Surprised it took this long. All right, so now that we got our drivers installed, uh, NVIDIA is still fucking terrible, okay? NVIDIA is an awful fucking company when it comes to making this shit work. So we're going to go to Etsy. All right, no, Nano Etsy. The make init CPIO. Okay, this is what we're going to be using to like regenerate our init RAM FS. We want to go to the configuration. So where it says modules with like nothing in it, you want to do NVIDIA. All right, NVIDIA mode set. You want to do NVIDIA <laughs> UVM. And then you want to do NVIDIA DRM. Not capital, DRM. This is very important in this order. If you fuck this order up, if you fuck this order up, all right, bad times. I don't even know. Not, I've never, I've never changed this order. Maybe you can mix and match. <laughs> the world is your fucking mode set. All right, boys, go for it. But don't fuck it up. So save that. All right, you're good. Now it's time to also go back to our bootloader. So nano bootloader entries arch. No, not arch. Default. I usually call it arch, and then arch like dash pass through, and then arch dash amd. But for the first time in my life, I called it default, which is a terrible fucking naming scheme, by the way. Don't ever do it. Now, you see this options line? I want you to go to the end, and in boot time, I want NVIDIA to fucking... I want NVIDIA to win. I want NVIDIA to be fucking recognized everywhere, okay? This is very fucking important. You want to do NVIDIA-DRM mode set. This is straight from the NVIDIA Arch Wiki shit, all right? And you want to call it equal one. This is very fucking important, okay? You don't fucking do this, all right? Your NVIDIA card is going to be shitting itself. Not entirely. Save that up. And now, you want to fucking create a hook, all right? Because if you don't create a hook, every time you update your kernel, your fucking drivers are going to sit there on the old kernel. It's going to be bad. So now it's time to make a little bit of a hook, all right? So go nano... Actually, you want to make a directory because this isn't there by fucking default. Make directory, Etsy, Pacman D, dot D, and then you want to call it hooks. 
I don't know why they don't fucking automatically do it. All right, I don't fucking understand the logic. They used to, I think, do it, but you want to make a hook. All right, we're almost done. We are almost done, okay? This is literally just for the NVIDIA people, okay? We pay a lot of money for our graphic cards just to get fucked over by Linux. And, and in, not Linux, but NVIDIA. NVIDIA. Fuck that. All right, you want to do Nano, Etsy, Pac-Man D hooks, and call this NVIDIA. Now, you want to make square brackets, and you're going to tell Linux... This is what this is. This is the trigger. This is what's going to happen. So you want to do operation equal install, operation equal upgrade, operation equal remove. What is the type? Package. You want to do? You want to do fucking target? Nvidia. Now what happens when this trigger happens? What happens when Nvidia triggers the fuck out of the Linux Pac-Man Update Manager? You want to give it the title of action, all right? Now, the action, you want to take, what is the depends, all right? Like the diaper that old people wear, the depends? Well, making it CPIO, which is regenerate the init RAMFS and recreate those fucking drivers. When? During the post transaction. Exec exec executing what? Well, you're going to execute the command user bin make in it cpio capital p now why do we do capital p well capital p is very fucking important let's say that you're one of those guys who are like or gals who are like i want multiple fucking kernels it's a logical thing the capital p regenerates for every fucking kernel that's on your system if you don't do capital p it'll it's gonna freak the fuck out it's gonna rebuild for once that's for all presets and kernels and shit you have installed Okay, capital P is very fucking important. You don't want you don't. You, you, this is where punctuation comes alive. You understand that? All right, now that we're done, we're installed, boys. We're good. Exit, and then you want to do a fucking reboot, and you want to pull your drive out. So you ain't fucking with that shit anymore. That's for sure. So this is what Linux looks like rebooting. Got your motherboard. It's booting in. Whoa, look at that. As long as you're seeing green OKs, God is on your side. Hey, we're in now. So now it's time to log in. And bam, we have it installed. Not totally. You know, we're st we still got a fucking ways to go, don't we? Okay, so now that everything is installed, I want to do a quick thing. System CTL failed. Yeah, boy, nothing fucked up. No fucked up. Now it's time. Now, you could use Linux like this, but I'm going to ask people in the fucking audience. Do you want, do you want a GUI? Do you want a little, do you want a little bit of a beautiful thing to look at? You know? You want to be able to watch your hentai? Well, now we need a fucking GUI. Now, I know people are going to ask me what I do. Listen, boys. I'm getting, I'm, I'm not getting myself XFCE, boys. This isn't 1995 anymore. I'm not getting myself GNOME because I'm not a fucking idiot. I'm getting myself KDE Plasma because I got a nice computer and we're going to fucking roll out that way. All right. So first we need Mesa. So sudo Pacman S Mesa. This is where sudo is needed because we're not in our root direct root uh, account anymore. We're going to download Mesa. All right, I know that I had it installed. I just do this because it's fucking clean for me. I'm going to go and reinstall it again. Now it's time to get our Zorg server. Now you may have heard of things like fucking Wayland and shit. Wayland is good, but we're going to stick with God's, God's intended Zorg, okay? This is what we're going to go with. Zorg server. We're going to get Zorg apps. We're going to get Zorg X in it. We're going to get Zorg TWM. We're going to get Zorg X Clock. You might be like, Muda, why are we getting all of this? It's because of the wiki fucking sex, though, okay? That's pretty much what it is. You're going to hit enter. It's going to be like, whoa, you want all? Fuck yeah. It's 11 megabytes. You sure you want to deal with all? Yes. And look at that. It's fucking installing that shit. We're, get we're getting it going. 
Somebody says, who likes lowly? Okay. All right, we're trying, we're trying to be good boys here, okay? We're not trying to get fucking busted by the feds. Oh, look at that. We installed it. Now, moment of truth. If God, if God is on our side, typing in the word start X. Whoa, dude, we got a little GUI. We got a clock. We got three terminal windows. But that isn't what, that isn't kosher. We're going to exit out of here, okay? We're going to close that. We're going to make that, whoa. We're going to make that shit look prettier. Clear that out of there. God damn, that's disgusting. Now it's time to get our package manager. Pseudo, Pac-Man, S, Plasma for KDE. SDDM for our login manager. Whoa, you want all of it? Fuck yeah. You want the default? Fuck yeah. You want GStreamer? Fuck yeah. Hit yes. Whoa. Look at that. We're installing it. Somebody's like, imagine using KDE Plasma. Listen, I just like KDE a lot. That shit's golden. It's going to download all those fucking... I know you guys are like bloat. Listen, man. This ain't grandma's fucking system anymore. This is my system. Real men use i3. That is true. I have a VM build for i3. I use i3 in like VMs and shit. Real men use DWM. <laughs> Listen. It doesn't matter, okay? This is all good, as long as you're not using fucking Deepin or some normal, you know, normie shit like that. Actually, Deepin's not too bad. XFCE is good if you you know, if you need to, if you need to, like, you know, whittle down your computer. XFCE is fine. I can't just zoom it, unfortunately. Muted, please cancel G Fuel. You're gonna die again in a second. G Fuel did not kill me; it revived me. It's a good product. I like it. In fact, I have a little bit left. I'm gonna sit that shit down or chug it. Don't worry, boys. It'll install. It'll install. If you use code SOG, it'll help me win and I can get a fucking Arch Linux branded cup. It's up to me, man. When is the OnlyFans coming? If I made an OnlyFans, do you think I could upload content like this and still be in like the top 1% and shit? Is XFCE bloat? No. Dude, the idea of bloat anymore, it's, it's just not so fucking common as you would expect, man. It's like, if you're on a high-end system like mine or whatever, if you're on a gaming system, bro, the bloat's not that fucking important, dude. Don't listen to the media hype. Why do I have so much shit fucking missing? It's so out of it. Like, what do I have connected to my fucking system? Why do I have so much connected to my system that's gonna... Eh, I'll probably... I'll, I'll, I'll fix that later on. That's not so fucking important. Anyways, now that's done, we want to do sudo... System CTL enable uh, SDDM dot service. Watch this. We're gonna reboot and connect. Just watch it. Just watch it. Watch this shit, boys. Why can't you? You can. It's called Manjaro. There's plenty of scripts where you can automate. Like you can, you can do it. The only reason it's taken me this long is because I'm just typing it for you. Otherwise, I'd be done with this shit in like ten minutes. It's not that hard. Look at that. It's doing the DHCPC. It's doing the it's doing the fucking uh, check. Bam, here we are. Whoa, what's that? Login? Whoa. We're connecting. Whoa. Look at where we fucking came from, boys. We came from the ghetto all the way to the nicest fucking place in the world. Here we are. KDE. But you guys might be noticing, whoa, it's a real blank, me. Do you don't even have a fucking web browser? Yeah, I don't have a web browser. But let me show you guys how to install shit. Go to terminal. X term. Pseudo. Pac-Man S. Console. Most important thing in my opinion. Get that new console. We gotta we gotta quit out from this fucking poor man X term into a into a proper God intended terminal. Okay, with this terminal, I have the power to enlarge text. Pseudo Pac-Man S. Uh, let's get uh let's get fucking Firefox, a little furry fox action. Okay, let's get a, let's get ourselves a little groomer box action. 
All right, and let's get ourselves a little game in action. Whoa. Bam. Discord, Discord is a groomer tool, dude. <laughs> Discord is for the groomers. But it's cool. As you can see, this is how we install. Normally on Windows, you're downloading through fucking, you know, services that can be, you know, fucking intercepted in between. Linux is just that easy. Whoa. Hold on. I want a file manager. Let me do Dolphin. Let me also get Kit. See how fast it installs? Whoa, I have furry fox. Hell yeah, dude. Now I can now I can browse for hentai. Whoa, I have groomer box enabled, dude. I can fire up groomer central. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Whoa, I have steam, bro. Get me get me that steam action. I want to play some video games. You know, people are always like, do Linux games have fucking anything? And goddamn. Are all those install packages on an open source Linux server? No, it's just part of the package repository. Oh, shit. God damn. How is it so fast? Because it's Linux. It's an advanced operating system. This isn't your fucking, this isn't your dad's operating system. Jesus Christ. Yay. Let's get, let's get the ore working here. Let me go to, let me go to the, uh, let me go to yay ore here real quick. I want, I want to access fucking the, the ore, which is the big part. Now, you got to be real careful because there could be some fucked up packages here, but I'm going to get the snapshot here real quick. Save that on my system. All right. Open that up. Downloads. Whoa, I can't open that? Well, fuck me. Don't worry, kids. Papa Moot is here to tell you. You want to get you want to get 7-zip? Pseudo Pac-Man S? P7-zip? Arc is a... Ooh, hit enter. Moot <laughs> didn't download Spider fucking Solitaire. I don't fuck around with that shit. I probably should. Whoa! Steam is working? Well, fuck my asshole. That shouldn't be possible, Jesus Christ. But it is. Alright, let me log into my account. Better. Better, uh. Better do. Better, 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 uh. Better, better do one of these. I told you guys I was gonna fuck her. We don't use WinRAR in this fucking operating system. All right, what do you take me for? What do you take me for, kids? All right, Jesus, this is the magic school bus, not the fucking crack den. All right, we don't we don't use WinRAR here, Jesus Christ. You know, my fucker, kids, kids using Bandicam in my class, and I send them straight to the shitter. Jesus, you guys are out of your fucking mind. I know I could just untar. No. Let's see, we've got yay right over here. We got all this fucking bullshit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What game do we want to get? Wait, first off, I got to turn off family-friendly fucking mode. All right. Oh, shit. Let's enable, let's enable this nonsense real quick. System, Steam Play, enable Steam Play for other titles. 513.0. Yes, restart Steam, all that shit. I have family friendly because I do. Uh, I I share my games with my brother, so you need to fucking have this family friendly shit for some stupid reason. Uh, let's install Yay real quick. Open terminal. Uh, tar, xzbf. Uh, fucking what is this? Yay, tar z cool. Cd to get into it. Uh, make package. Csi. Yeah, we don't we don't use we don't use fucking bandy cam, dude. That's what we call that's what we call homeless video recording, you know. Whoa. Yes. Install Go as a dependency. Yeah, remember we're gonna write an autobiography. God, I don't know. Thank you, Ivanator, for the fucking five tier subs, dude. Jesus. Thank you, brother. Whoa. What games do we download? Now these are all Windows games, you know. Some some of some of these have Linux versions, but. They really like their... Well, you know what? I got a great fucking game right now. Great fucking game. Let's play some Yakuza 0. Oh, you guys want to play FF15? 
You want to fucking download a hundred? How much? How big is FF15? Actually, that might be fun. Final Fantasy, uh, Windows Edition. Whoa, eighty-six gigabytes. Whoa. Nah, dude, fuck that. We're gonna download Yakuza. So hold on. Do you guys want to do Yakuza? Or do you want to like test the graphic cards of Linux? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna shut these Linux Linux haters down. You guys want to see a uh, Yakuza Kiwami 2 running at max settings on fucking on on Linux, or do you want to see Yakuza Zero? It's up to you guys. They're both the same. They're both they're both good games. You guys want to see me max this fucker out? Let's do it. Install install the game. So, yeah, prep that file for install. Install the uh, package manager, yes. So, let's get Brave Browser, because I like Brave a lot. So, yay, Brave! Or slash Brave Bin is the one I use. Diffs to show? Don't worry, I've already read it a million times. Oh, download FNAF. I'm going to put all this effort into fucking installing it. You want me to play fucking Five Nights at Freddy's? What's wrong with you people? Why do you, why do you, why do you torture me like this? Why do you hurt me like this? I don't get it. Oh, man. Yakuza's really taking a fucking time to prep. Jesus. It's like cock porn, bro. This dude's prepping the bull like no tomorrow. All right, let's get rid of these. All right, but as you can see, Linux... Why isn't this not... Why the fuck... Oh my god, dude. No, uninstall. We're gonna do the other one. But let me see, is Discord Don't sign in. I don't I don't want I don't want Discord to be signed in. Steam. We've got clipboard contents, everything. I don't know why it took forever actually. Patient zero, damn fucking straight. Patient zero. Jesus Christ. Uh oh. I'm just going to enter a couple uh, sensitive things here real quick. Oh, Yakuza 0 is also like half the size. Fuck, I'll go with that. Oh, it was installing Proton, dude. Fuck me. All right, now that we're done, uh, we're installing the common redistributables. Let's install the pre-caching. All right, boys, install the game right here. Shouldn't take too fucking long. Uh, my internet's kind of shit, so uh, just give it like five fucking minutes. What Linux distro? Arch. Now, this is what like fucking people showcase all the time. Like this is this is like their pornography. So you want to do pseudo Pac-Man S NeoFetch, uh, and you want to hit enter, and you want to do like NeoFetch, and now you can like show off to your friends. I got an Arch DJ dog, guys. I'm your fucking cue. All right, now you guys want to see my favorite fucking, um, you guys want to see my favorite task manager tool? Watch this. It's really fucking cool. Your friends will, your friends will think you're the fucking NSA. All right. So type in bash top. Look at this. That's what I use, dude. See how fucking cool that is? See how base this shit is? Fucking God's gift to the world right here, dude. It's fucking real sick. All them cores. Dude, I have a fucking... I have that $7,000 build I'm telling you guys about. It has 128 threads. It doesn't even fucking sit inside here. You guys want to see some real Hacker Man shit? Dude, watch this. This is like fucking... This is this is like what every Linux channel just shows you. Pseudo Pac-Man S, C Matrix. Just watch this. This is like fucking porn for people. Watch this. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm Neo the Hacker, dude. I'm a hacker. <laughs> I hacked the shit <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking it's like it's like they put you can put this shit up on a second monitor and people will be like whoa what are you doing and i'm like yeah i'm i'm downloading the nsa secret files right now every single line right here is like a file thread being sent to my system uh it's really just c matrix for all the fucking nerds out there you know it's people the people who think that it's people who really think that now these are all the backgrounds that we have uh as you can see here's what we call the logan paul uh, pretty depressing, I would say. All right, I, I, I personally, th this is this is like even more depressing. Like they need to get some fucking uplifting fuck. They need to get some uplifting wallpapers, dude. This is bad. 
This shit's bad. Here, let's go with flow. This is like basic shit. This is like basic shit, dude. <laughs> Put a hentai wall. You absolutely could have a hentai wallpaper. You just like straight up could. There's not. There's nothing stopping you. I don't even know why I'm opening up Discord. I don't want to get fucking groomed. <laughs> why are Discord groomer jokes like the easiest jokes to make? Like it's just straight up the funniest shit imaginable. Is it installing faster? Jesus Christ. Fucking Canadian internet, dude. It's okay. You have to sign in to get groomed. <laughs> oh, man, dude. The best one was in the YouTube stream where we saw, like, that bullshit where it was, like... What was it? What was the fucking... It was, like, the... It was, like, don't trust my ex... Don't trust this person. He's my ex-Discord moderator. And it's, like, you will never believe what went wrong. Really? Pfft, really? I wouldn't know what happened. We got a Discord moderator as a friend, bro. The ex-Discord moderator. You could only imagine in your head what the fuck could have happened, right? Like, really? I don't know what happened? Okay, dude. It's so, like, okay, buddy. And, uh, as you can see, hit play. Posted. Yeah, can we keep the memes out of general? I really, I really don't like you guys actually having fun. Okay, you're getting banned now. You know, nobody in the server can 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 say that word. That's a word of hate. <laughs> Fucking hate Discord people, dude. Yeah, we keep it pretty serious in this. We're a commu Okay, guys, I need you in the secret channel. We need to have a talking to. The secret channel could be like you're either getting fucking reprimanded or you're going to get fucking diddled, dude. Hey there, kitten. Want to watch a movie? Oh, wait, you're, you're how old again? It doesn't matter. It's only a number, right? <laughs> fucking damaging, dude. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I might be 34 years old, but I'm also 12 at heart. <laughs> it's so fucking dumb, dude. So dumb. Yeah, let's watch Monsters, Inc. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Chief. Like, all right, dude. Motherfucker be out there wanting to watch Monsters, Inc., dude. Yeah, have you ever looked up what BDSM is? <laughs> no. Ooh. Whoa! Look at that! Wait, you're not hearing the audio. Don't worry, I'm not hearing it either. But, I will set the output to HDMI. Oh fuck, it's really loud. I am so sorry. Wow, a Windows game working on Linux? What the fuck? That shouldn't be possible. I'm gonna call the FBI, you can't just get away with that shit. I'm so so I'm so sorry about that. I didn't fucking expect it. They they made this game loud as shit. It's only sixty hertz because of this fucking piece of shit capture card. Whoa, dude, that shouldn't be possible, guys. This shouldn't be built, dude. Microsoft is like, wait, they can game aside from our system? How dare you? So I want you to understand what we're doing is we're putting this game through a compatibility layer and it's effectively uh it's it's basically uh in real time taking windows calls and converting them to fucking linux calls and same with the actual like direct x variant we have uh this isn't perfect uh, newer games obviously won't work day one but it gets better as time goes on like you can see that this game works fucking flawlessly 
That's 60 fucking frames, boys. This is why I don't game on Windows, man. I mean, one of my biggest things now just works very easily on Linux. This wasn't that hard. If you were on Ubuntu, it was just downloading Steam and enabling Proton. The FPS counter, uh, I, I, I might need to get Mango Hut for that, because... Um... Actually, wait, where is Mango Hut? Let's do that. Let me just save the game real quick. Oh man, dude, do I have to fucking fight these nerds? Uh, I have a I have a 120 hertz monitor, but it's capped to 60 because of the capture card. And I am. Uh, do I does Steam have one built in? How do you enable it on Steam? Oh, FPS counter. Top left. Okay. Yeah, it's running at 60, boys. And they're all straight 60. Dude, I love the fucking music in this. Get out of here, sir! We don't like we don't like we don't like your lower tier gang shit around here. <laughs> that dude's getting his ass fucking handed to him. That dude's like fucking straight stun lock. No. Whew. That was terrible. Missed it all. You guys want to fucking shit on Bill Gates's dreams? You want you want to run Halo on fucking Linux? If you wants to run some Halo on the Linux side of things, you don't see that shit? You don't see some fucking Halo? <laughs> Let's run Halo, dude. Now, you can't play this online because of anti-cheat, but that's what VMs are for. But I'll show you guys how the single player runs underneath Linux, so... Give this a little, give this a little download real quick. It's getting the shader pre-caching con content. That wasn't uh, 1080p, but it runs just fine on my 3440 by 1440. Anti-cheat, yeah, the anti-cheat is sort of like the fuck fucking death knell of Linux gaming. So multiplayer games, obviously, unless they're supported on Linux, will work. But through Proton, you're never gonna get your multiplayer games up. It's just because uh, here's the thing with anti-cheat, they're so fucking in depth and like. Anti-cheat is so invasive that I don't think some anti-cheat will ever really work primarily on Linux anyways. So that's the problem. That's why we have, that's why we have things like fucking, um, uh, that's why we have things like VM so we can run, you know, multiplayer games under there. Even though now a lot of developers are targeting VMs because fucking 0.1% of the hacker base is actually using VMs to do it. Even though there's so many fucking easier ways to hack without a VM, but... You didn't hear that from me, dude. I mean, shit. I'm not an anti-cheat developer. I just need to fucking make bands up so I can get hired more by developers. Fuck anti-cheat, dude. Fuck anything about anti-cheat. I hate so much of these services because anti-cheat, the whole goal is for them to ban the fuck out of everyone so they can have like a high, like, oh, we ban a million players a fucking month, even though it's just, it, a lot of them are fucking false bans and then everyone just hires them. Like, it's so fucking stupid, dude. Fuck everything about anti-cheat. Fuck all. If, if games have invasive-ass anti-cheat, like Valorant, like, listen, I wanted to play Valorant, but with the shitty anti-cheat that they have, it's just not worth it. It's not worth fighting it. It's not worth dealing with it. Why the fuck would I install some rootkit software into my system? It's so fucking brain dead. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, but it really helps uh, against the hacker. There's still fucking hackers in the game. Granted, there's less of them, but now you have this fucking bullshit, like, attack surface installed onto your system. It's like people just don't understand. And it's like, the other thing is like, what do you have to hide? It's not, what do I have to hide? I pay money for my system and I don't fucking like installing bullshit features. I do not like installing bullshit rootkit software, borderline rootkit at times on my system anyways. It's just dumb. There's like, just no reason for it. It's like, but how are you going to play the game? I fucking won't. Yeah, but you're, the other thing is like, you got the money, just buy a separate Windows 10 system. I don't need to. If the game is that fucking invasive, I'm not going to do it. 
all right jesus christ like people out there really expecting that like i need to get no fuck it i'm not gonna deal with your fucking stupid game like that's why i play less of rainbow six siege why bother fighting off battle i fuck their game like i'm done with it man like i'll play it i'll enjoy it with my friends but i'm not gonna give too much of a shit anti-cheat is terrible like dude they barely target the actual offenders it's like and everyone is sitting over there like oh yeah but the hardware ban like people give the stupidest shit like i talked to one guy who's like yeah but you know what they need to do hardware bans i'm like congratulations right there i can understand you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about and they're like what do you mean i'm like it takes me five fucking milliseconds to get to spoof my hardware id bam you're not going to be able to ban people like that are you fucking stupid it's like, why would you need a virtual machine to game anyways? Because I don't fucking install shit like Windows 10 on my main system. That's stupid. That's dumb. Fuck, Windows 10 runs better for me under a VM anyways. Why the fuck would I bother? Like, Jesus. 8 gig RAM is the minimum. If you have 16 gigs, you can VM just fine. I don't know, man. People need, people need, to, people need to relax on there, dude. Shit. And the thing is, people don't get it. It's like virtual machines have many disadvantages, like somebody just said. What kind of VM are you talking about? Are you talking about, like, VMware? Are you talking about VirtualBox? Or are you talking about KVM? All right? Because if we're talking about kernel virtual machines, like we're talking about type 1 hypervisors, um, what disadvantage? Because I'm not gaming under... That's the other misconception. I don't use VirtualBox or VMware to run a VM. Those are type two hypervisors. You are running it at OS level. You're not passing through hardware. You're not giving it a GPU. Of course, it's gonna be fucking slow. Of course, you're not gonna game under it. I use bare metal hypervisors like KVM. Shit that peep, shit the same companies that ban me for using their own fucking servers. So it's like, the, 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 when I use KVM, it's like using Windows 10, basically on a native level, maybe 2% performance loss. So here it is. Let's run. Let's run Halo. And uh, the cool thing about it is, even though they have anti-cheat, just uh, they have a, a system where you can disable it just for single player and like custom games. What are the advantages to my KVM system? I literally pass through a GPU or run it as if it's native. And let's say my Windows partition, let's say my virtual machine gets a virus. There's a very fucking little chance that the virus is ever going to bust into my main system. A lot of it is just securing your personal stuff. I don't need to use Windows all the time. I'm only going to use it for editing videos and fucking uh, playing around. I don't dual boot. There's no reason. I don't trust. That way I can play shady fucking games on my Windows 10 partition and not fucking worry about a virus infecting me, you know? And if Windows fails, I can just save state back to its original thing. I don't have to reinstall or do anything. That's what it comes down to. And with a VM, when I, sh I showed you guys the video where I installed a Mac VM, ran just like you would expect. You just pass through a GPU for it. It is what it is. And honestly, we did that one thing where we uh, tested my fake ma my my ma my VM Hackintosh got a higher performance rating than anything Apple was shitting out. Most of what Apple was shitting out. Play games through Docker containers? Eh, I don't think you can really get that going. Is Boot Camp on Mac OS? I think you mean Boot Camp. Uh, no, Boot Camp is you're run you're installing Windows natively to a MacBook, but you're just booting into that. It just comes with it just comes with drivers to assist Windows in recognizing Mac hardware. That's pretty much what it is. Does KVM need a dedicated GPU just for the VM? I mean, no, it doesn't. If you want to pass through one for better performance, yes, it needs a dedicated GPU. But now there are ways to do a single GPU pass through. You just can't use Linux at the same time as Windows. But uh, if you have one GPU, you can actually get away with it now. Would I recommend Ubuntu or Linux Mint? I think Linux Mint is good. You can just get away with Linux Mint. I think it's better now. Ubuntu, I don't like. I don't like Ubuntu, man. 
I do not like Ubuntu whatsoever. I think Ubuntu is without a doubt a fucking. I don't know. It never works on ha hardware that I'm using, so I don't even fucking bother with it. Like, if you want to use Ubuntu, there's something called Pop OS, but I even fucking hate Pop OS now because Pop OS is the same fucking problem as base Ubuntu, which is like any hardware that I have barely fucking works. Like, I would rather use Windows 10 natively than fucking any of those Debian based ones. RTX 3070 is great for fucking VM, dude. It works just fine. I want you to understand when you pass a GPU through, it's as if it's running natively for that OS. So, that's just fine. I use Linux because I do also code. I do, you know, keep it for the safety performance. And it just serves as a good server thing going around. You can use your integrated graphics as a second GPU if you want. I've done that, but my integrated graphics sucks asshole. I only get 50 uh, hertz output on anything, so I don't even bother. What do I think about Solus OS? Never have used that. If you have an eGPU, you can use that just fine. Let's say you have a laptop. You can, you can get an AMD GPU and you can just turn your laptop into like a fucking pseudo MacBook. It's actually fucking sick. So this part takes long. That's because it's processing the shaders in this just so it doesn't have a stutter problem. Uh, you can actually see it doing it in action by opening up like a bash top real quick and you can see that it's currently fucking maxing out my CPU like crazy. Uh, the reason it's doing this is because uh, it's it's rendering all those shaders. So all this fossilize you're seeing is it's just pre-calculating right now for the heck of it to keep it running. Uh, again, the better CPU you have, in this case I have an i9-9900K, the better performance you're going to get in this fucking situation. Does it only, or wait, what is it? May sound like it, but with a process for a GPU pass-through uh, change. Yeah, NVIDIA, you have to introduce... For uh, for things like NVIDIA GPUs, you have to make sure that you pass through, uh, you spoof, I think, hardware IDs, you spoof the, you spoof something, you spoof, like, vendor IDs, so, like, uh, Linux doesn't, because Linux has, like, a protection where, like, if it detects it's in a VM, they won't let you install it, and that's because they want you to buy, like, the fucking super expensive VM-based GPUs that they sell, but it's very easy to bypass uh for amd you need to do nothing because amd is fucking based in this regard and they just let you use it am i an intel or amd guy the build that i'm getting that's several thousand dollars just for the sake of you know building the ultimate rig is fucking amd like it's a ryzen build uh amd graphic cards have a reset bug but there is a patch that you can do for kernel stuff and it does actually work it's kind of a little brain dead just because uh, the patch basically goes into like AMD's experimental branch and I think what they do is they like power the card off like they kind of like power it off on the motherboard and then they repower it just to get past it I really don't really agree that the unused RAM is wasted RAM philosophy though yeah but it is if you're not using RAM you're kind of just wasting it you know like there's no like if you if, if the RAM is pi like right now I have 59 gigs of available memory yeah, I could use more. I could, you know, filling this out, there's nothing harmful about it. All right, here it is. Halo, Halo fired up. Should I get a Threadripper or i9? I mean, if you if you want to get a Threadripper, get a Threadripper. <laughs> that's, always, that's always ideal. Anyways, though, uh, I need to sign into my Xbox account. Surprisingly, uh, on Linux, and I think maybe it's the way that Linux handles RAM, there's just not a whole lot of RAM usage on my Chrome-based browsers. Let me just sign in. Okay. I don't think I can do games online because of the anti-cheat not being part of it. Where is it? Uh, Microsoft. All right, here it is. I'll just leave it up as a VOD on Twitch. Yeah, see, easy anti-cheat isn't enabled. 
But if you go to campaign, I'll show you the performance of, uh, of the campaign. It's available. Uh, this is one of those things, right? Let's do Halo Reach. Understand, this is a uh, Halo finally running on Linux. One point, Microsoft considered this operating system equivalent to communism. And now we're fucking here. Remember, this used to be a communist operating system because they were fucking sucking money out of Microsoft. A little bit of stutter going on, Kilo but dispatch. I think it's just like calculating All available a bunch of deals. To Traxxas Tower. Evacuation will commence so the stutter that happens is because we're fine, like, it's kind of like an emulator, how when we see something tower new, it stutters just Let's to compile the shader, and then after that it's fine. Copy dispatch for so, zero. yeah. It's a small price to pay, but, you know, game works. And, uh, is this max settings, by the way? Yeah, this is on, this is on the freshest kernel. We're on art, so let's enhance the visuals a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. Save settings. I don't want to play on like fucking discount baby resolution. Uh, can we turn off V-Sync just so I can see how high things... Yeah, turn off V-Sync. Uh, frame rate limit un unlimited. Uh, as you guys can see, underneath Linux... Uh, what does the number on the top right say? Can somebody read that? Can somebody uh, read the number on the top... Top, sorry, top left. Of course, after a little bit of the stutter, the average frame rate is uh, somewhere around 420 frames, 300 ish. I think it's supposed to be like that. I thought that was a bug. Oh, fuck. God damn, these things fucking suck ass on hard difficulty. Shit. Oh, this dude's fucking running away? Bullshit. Uh, I want to say right now, if it's choppy right now, it's because of the uh, fucking capture card. I think, I think my laptop is kind of fucking saying, ooh, I'm thermal throttling a little bit, buddy. I don't think so, actually. No, there is a bit of a stutter, but it's fine. It's getting better. That's be that's literally because we're just compiling Kilo things the first time. What's the wizard here? Oh, fuck me. Oh, What's the, uh, do you know the Vizzer key, Copy by the way? Kilo like, the, the key we use for Firing fucking... FPF-1 at your command. Fire FPF-1, over. Firing FPF-1. Shot. Hold on to your helmet. No, what, isn't there a night vision or something? Where's the, uh, night vision? Anybody know? Oh, four. There it is. Whew. But yeah, how does that feel, guys? Now, if I was running this under a VM with Windows 10, no stutter. This is only because of Linux's Proton that's running this. This is only because Linux is... Remember, what we're doing right now is we're doing a window... We're converting Windows calls directly to Linux in real time. And we're doing the same thing with the DirectX as well, too. So this is... There's a lot going on behind the scenes to make this fucking magic happen, okay? I want you to really understand that. The screen tearing is rough because I have VSync off. That's why we're hitting like 690 frames. If this was a VM, wouldn't have a single FPF1. fucking stutter right now. Shot. So I want you to understand that. That's why I game under VMs. This is Linux compiling fucking shaders, okay? This is, this is why this happens. So now, if I go to like fucking settings, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do the, uh, I'm gonna do the, 
Maybe the save thing and just put on some V-Sync. I don't like playing with V-Sync on, but it gets rid of a lot of the screen tear. Jesus, fuck. It's like plasma weapons just work better. Kilo four zero, request fuck, wait, another big thing. What's the, uh, what's the key for armor ability? Like, what's the default key for that? I remember when I couldn't hit. Ah, shift isn't even working for me. I might I might have a different setting or something. Gameplay. Uh, controls. Keyboard, mouse. Oh, configure bindings. Uh, use armor ability? Should be just shift, right? Stop for some thing. reason, it's just not working for me. I don't know why that is. There's got to be a reason for it. Watch that be like a fucking proton bug. That shift doesn't work. Oh, that would suck ass. Well, it's not like I need armor lock. This, guy sh this guy's easy. Man, dude, the plasma pistol's fucking god tier for these guys. Shit. I've never realized how effective the plasma pistol is at dealing with all this shit. You know what's funny? Half-Life is actually native. Uh, we I have G-Sync on Linux here. There's G-Sync. There's G-Sync and FreeSync. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Half-Life, guys, these are all natives, by the way. So, like, some of these games, you don't even need Proton. Like, Half-Life alone... Like, if you go to, like, fucking... What is this? Is this the, uh... How do you tell it's, like, fucking... Half-Life 2? Half-Life 2 episode... Half-Life 2 deathmatch? Yeah, some of these are, like, fucking just straight up, like, native. So you can, like, check it out for yourself. See how, like, inside here it doesn't say you need Proton? That's because this is, like, just legit Half-Life. Like, for Linux. Uh, I think every Valve game is native. So, you can play CSGO native as well. I want Mango HUD, though. How do you do Mango HUD? Where, where's, the, where's the Mango HUD guide? Get clone. I think I've, I, I wait, wait, hold on. Does it have it in the repository? Watch it be no, it's not. Is it in the, uh, is it in the ore? Oh, it is. Eh, I'll just build it directly from this dude's source. Fuck it. Uh, let's get his git repository. Cool. Oh, wait. Are we in the home? Yeah, mango hood. Uh... Uh, do you wish to install these script? Yes. We're actually uh, building the fucking we're 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 building the program here. Hold on. We uh we are currently building. We are compiling the tools. <laughs> so yeah, you know when people are like building from source code. This this is what it is, boys. Uh. So we need to build the next one. Cool. Oh, package is built. Once you have compiled. This is literally copy pasting it. This is the best fucking part. Mango Hut has been installed. So what is this? Prepackaged binaries? Aw, oh, dude, fuck that. All right, so. Uh, to enable it, we go to, for Steam games, Mango Hunt Command. 
you can add this as a launch option. No. So yeah, it, actually, if you want to run the PC version of Half-Life 2, like the Windows 10 version, you can do this. But we're going to run the basic Linux version because uh, Valve, Valve put the effort. Fuck, where's the, where's the fucking thing? Launch options. Here we go. This to be so much more different and easier. It had like literally no shader to fucking process. Hey, we got Mango Hut. Watch the PC version of the game, the Windows 10 version of the game, just be better. Oh shit, okay. Sorry if some of this shit is boring though, because uh, I, I know that this Linux stuff can be fucking dry, but I hope you guys enjoy it, you know? I want you guys to enjoy it, shit. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Not that I wish to imply you have been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving of a rest. This game and still holds the up the test of time. Can we get a can we get better graphics though? Video? I know that I can get I know that I can push higher graphics on Half-Life 2. Can I remember can I can I remind the audience? There used to be a point in my life where I couldn't even get this game running at five frames, man. So blessful for you. God damn, dude. We have a community growing up. When I was when I was a younger Turn kid, couldn't get this game run. Have gone to waste Look at how much my CPU is being taxed. Well, let's just say <laughs> oh, you're look at how look at how much the again. CPU is fucking taxed, man. Look at the GPU there too. Shit. It's like it's like the entire the computer is like barely fucking touched. Can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the. Ashes. That is a lot for the GPU, though, isn't it? Oh, it's because like the GPU is like fuck. It's just pushing that many frames. Watch what happens when you put VSync on. Watch this. Advanced. Look at look at the GPU. It just like drops. <laughs> no, it actually really doesn't. You can just turn it off. Nobody plays their games like this. Man, I've not played this game in fucking years, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. What a time to be alive. Can I increase FOV? This is bad. Oh. Right there. Yeah, but this is Half-Life 2, and this is a native Welcome. version of the game, so we're not Welcome doing anything Proton. Valve actually coded the game for Linux. Or, so, that's, uh, that's, that's the other fucking thing. There's other developers that have done the same. Like, uh, for instance, if you want to see uh, Deus Ex, they've actually, they've actually done that. So you can download uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided as an actual Linux game. Uh, TF2 is on here completely. Uh, like, Team Fortress 2, you can just download that, and it's fucking... It's a it's a native Linux version, anyways. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's kind of what we have, you know, going forward. Is that Linux, in my opinion, man, it's gonna be the future. It's gonna be it's gonna be something that you know stands the fucking test of time and all that shit. PCSX2 Arch Linux. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys. No, dude, Joel, I don't think it's that bad. I played through it and it's it's actually pretty good. Like from my experience, at least, I'm not. I'm not gonna say that it's fucking. It's a bad port. Like it might have been bad right there. It's just I don't know. No, you know, back in the day, Linux used to be hard for the average user, but now I think it's just gotten to the point where it's fucking. It's easy. You know, it's. it's I think most people can use it. PCSX2 is this. Uh, which one is this? PCSX2, uh, Git repository. Which one's a better version? Actually, let me see this. PCSX2. 
Uh, PCSX2 Git seems to be the most popular one. Is it in the is it in the base repos though? PCSX2. There are two provide. Yeah, go with default. Uh, yeah, sure. Download the dependencies, and you can get rid of those dependencies later too. You guys think it's better if I go with the Git version? What do you guys recommend the Git for for the Linux guy? Should I go with the Git version or should I go with like the Git would be experimental, right? Git would be the experimental branch, so let's do the Git version. Pseudo Pacman RS. Yeah, get rid of it. That's how we uninstalled dash uh, capital R and then S and it's boom, it's done. Let me just do one thing. Ooh, they've got a 64-bit Git master? Huh. Wait, let me do the package build real quick. Depends. It depend. You want to read through this a couple times just to make sure that nothing is, like, weird. You're not downloading something off, like, usually where your source is. Uh... I'm going to ask the audience here real quick. Which one do you guys recommend? The 64-bit Git or the regular Git? <laughs> I don't even think it matters anymore. I really don't think it matters which one. But, uh... I mean, unless there's, like, an actual enhancement for it. Let's just fucking do it. Yay. PCSX2. Uh, PCSX2 64-bit Git. Let's go 3. And... It depends which one's more up-to-date, though. No, dude. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Bop, bop, bop. Look at this one. Revision 685, revision 989. I don't think you want to go with the 64-bit kit. That's like fucking way behind. It's not maintained up to date. So I think you want to go with the regular one. Yeah. Sometimes it's not even about the vote. It's about looking at the revisions on it too. So go here. Hit here. So we're actually going to build it straight. And so the ore you know, as great as it is, is like one of the strongest tools of Arch Linux. This is why people use it. It'll build for you. So like, look at this right here. Uh, Git does pull from the master, but I think the, uh, so the way is, I think the 64 bit version of it may be slightly behind. Um, honestly though, it's not that big of a deal. It's really like both of the versions are going to run just fine anyways. Um, bam, look at this. We're building it right the fuck there. Do you know anything about coding in the field of medical software? I've never worked with medical software. Uh, I've never dealt with any of it. I mean, like, if it's just stand, if it's like medical software running on like you know Windows-based systems, uh, sure, like Windows embedded systems, potentially. But like a lot of those medical software, because uh, it depends. Like sometimes they have like their own specific hardware sets. Um, Medical software is like, it's, it's, it's a different field entirely, man. Because in medical software, you're dealing with a lot of other, like, we're not talking about like just computer, like medical computers running like Windows based systems, embedded systems, Windows 2000, like some of those systems are old. The, the reality of how do you build shit on GitHub from somebody else? You follow their instructions. But when it comes to like fucking uh, medical software, like if you're talking about the medical software where they have like embedded systems, like their own fucking hardware, that's so out of the fucking league. You're on your own deal right there. All right, here we go. So now that PCSX2 is here, uh, is it installed? Should be. Yeah. I mean, it's just proprietary firmware on a lot of those fucking hardware-based jobs, though. My job right now, I just sit around and trade and invest. That's what my job is. It's not that exciting. Is PCSX2 installed? What the fuck? Terminal. Why didn't it install? Uh, sure. Packages to clean build? None. No. Yes. Yes. Oh, wait. Did I not build it? Is it not built correctly? Whew. What is going on here? Sources are ready? Oh, yeah, needed to build here. 
failure occurred in build. Error making lib32 for GTK. GTK da, 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 da. What? Wait a minute. Right here is where you fail sometimes. It's easy though. There's probably like something over here. Hold on. Good night, Kermit. Did it not install that dependency? Development files were not found. Please ensure that package config is a path and is installed for 1.2 check. Also check that the library is returned. What? What the fuck is this? What? Oh, shit. What is it trying to tell me? What the fuck? Somebody tell me so I'm not, like, fucking mentally losing it real quick. Let's try the 64-bit git. <laughs> watch that fucking work. Watch that. Watch this one work, though. Yeah, sure. Remove makes. Package to show none. Watch this one fucking work. I might have the wrong version of GTK. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it had a mismatch on it. Let me try the 64-bit variant. Because somebody somebody just mentioned into the comments, it's like, I've been building the 64-bit package. Here's what I use. Yeah, this is this is the one somebody else. Rodrigo has his own package build here. Somebody's complaining. It's like, this is why it's in 32. Okay. Sure. What's the difference between Brave and Google? Uh, nothing. They're both based on Chrome, but... I just like Brave a little bit better because it has like that built-in shit. Been fun geeking out, man. Take care. You have a BIOS? Don't worry, I have a, I have a, I have a BIOS too. I, I definitely dumped it from my actual PlayStation Two. Uh, oh, I don't need to do it. It's still building the program. Uh, how do I access the HDD? Oh, let me install NTFS after this is done. Because I need a, uh, I need a, I need an ISO of the game. Fuck, man, I haven't eaten all day. Shit, I had like one fucking protein shake. That's not good. <laughs> NTFS is not bloat. I use it to fuck. The fuse block is not bloat. Okay, goddamn. I don't have any food. I don't have food. All right. Oh, look at that. PCSX2 installed. Ooh, first time configuration. Okay, first off, we're going to go to fucking theme. Global theme. We're going to fucking put dark mode on because I'm not fucking doing this light mode bullshit. Uh, let's see. Plug in search path. Next. Uh, let me get a legal BIOS real quick for my actual system. I'm not... Shut up. Shut up real quick. And get some legal fucking BIOS up real quick. Shut up.
Just dumping it out of my PlayStation. And whoa, look at that. I have totally fucking available biases. Cool. Awesome. Didn't, uh, didn't, you know. Let me get an ISO file too. Fuck. PCSX2. Where does this shit store? Document settings. Documents, PCSX2, uh, memory cards, yeah. All right, uh, configuration, memory cards. All right, let's do that. Let's just drop those fuckers in here. Overwrite, overwrite. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Refresh list. Hit OK. Where's that? Where's that motherfucking? Where's that, where's that, where's that original copy of Shin Megami Tensei 3 that I have? Because uh, we all know downloading ROMs is fucking haram, boys. Like, uh, if you download a ROM, God hates you. That's true. I, re I, read, I, read it, I read it on Fake Science Monthly, dude. Jesus Christ comes back and slaps the shit out of you for even doing that. You fucking download a ROM, you're paying with your goddamn fucking life. Jesus Christ. You don't want to download that shit, man. I downloaded a ROM once. Bad fucking time, dude. Fucking Leprechaun came out of my computer and fucking ripped my testicles off, bro. Seriously. No no memes. No, no joke. No nothing, dude. Shit was scary. Shit freaked me out. I think just for fucking sanity's sake, I'm going to... Oh, wait, can I get Bluetooth installed onto my box? Watch this. Watch this shit. So you, so you guys are like, man, Muda, how are you going to get your Bluetooth working? Well, chief, Arch Linux has a guide for everything. Uh, Bluetooth Arch Linux. So this is what I was following when I was installing their wiki page right here. This is what it came down to. Installation. Install the Blue Z package. Cool. Okay, so terminal. Terminal. Ooh, what the fuck? Terminal. Uh, let me just pin that, by the way. Uh, sudo pacman s blue z. Uh, blue z utils. Ooh, install yes whoa sudo pacman the generic bluetooth driver is a bt usb check when the module is loaded wait, 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 wait. check it uh ls mod no wait mod oh wait clear mod info what's it called uh bt usb not bad okay sudo system ctl enable bluetooth service Start. Cool. We got Bluetooth. Awesome. Let's connect an Xbox controller. Wait. Do you guys want to connect a PlayStation 4 controller? You know how on Windows you need DS3 tool and shit? Well, not on my fucking watch, boys. Well, this is a uh, this is a dead controller, actually. This is a wait. Does D do Dual Shot wait? Does the Dual Sense work on Linux? Does the Dual Sense work on Linux? Oh shit! Oh shit! What? Sony releases an official Linux driver. What? What? Wait a fucking second! What? That's a little fucking wild. Is it? Huh.
that's You guys want to try this? Wait, that's not even in Windows yet, is it? I I can't even use the thing in Windows. What? Hold on. Yeah, he's straight written a fucking DKMS driver. What the fuck? Okay. Wait, wait. Let me check the package build. Where's it coming out from? Is it a bad check? Install. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I don't know what's in the fucking patch though. URL patchwork kernel.org project. What's up? Blah, 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 blah. It's GPL2. Depends. Say it actually required archive now. Okay, cool. Let's see. Package build don't look too bad. It's not that big of an issue. I think I'm app armored anyways. Hey, legit crookie. I'm a little fucking surprised. Windows doesn't have this, does it? Windows 10 dual sense. Yeah, it's it's literally installing the DKMS right now. Uh, Windows setting dual. So how do you use a dual sense? Sony hasn't made a. Wait, what? What the fuck? How did this happen? This doesn't make any sense. So they ma they didn't make a driver for Windows 10 or Mac OS X, but somehow they have an actual driver for Linux. There's no way that there's no way this fucking works. There's no fucking way. This driver is installed. Hold on a second. That's so fucking bizarre, dude. Wait, let me uh, grab a controller. Let me just DC the, uh, oh, fucking hell. Let me just fucking close the, uh, let me just pull the cable out of the PlayStation real quick. Oh. Isn't it wild how the PS5 uses, like, a fucking small power cable and the PS4 is still rocking it? All right, let's see. Um... Dual sense uh, pairing. You always had a problem enjoying the little things of life, man. If I can help you mellow out, that's what it comes down to, dude. Life is a journey. The life is a fucking journey with like blind. It's a blind playthrough, and you never know what's gonna fucking change. But as long as you got, as long as you got your boys and your family, it's all fucking good. All right, let's see. Uh. So I have a Bluetooth, okay? It's detecting a lot of shit to open it. Okay, how to connect to my PC? So, how do I how do I connect it via fucking Is it not is it not like fucking how to pair your how to put dual sense into pairing mode? Oh, here it is. Can I not use that term on Facebook? Uh, fucking on on the site here? Is that is that bad? Wireless controller, sure. Holy fuck! It actually does motherfucking work. Look at this. So you, so on the on the so to show you guys what the how the controller works. Um. If you use the touchpad. You can move the mouse, right? That's how it works. So let's see if it works on PCSX too. That's kind of fucking insane in my opinion, actually. Okay. So obviously that's fucking awesome. Game controller, wait a minute. It actually fucking fully works, what the hell? The controllers themselves are going through just fine. Like, the triggers are working. So, this doesn't make any sense anymore. Why is it that Windows 10 didn't get a driver, but Linux got a driver for it? What? That's 
a little fucking unprecedented, actually. Someone at Sony decided, yeah, fuck, we'll make the driver for Linux, but not for Windows yet. PS4 is a free BF... I mean, it, well, it's free BSD, but, like, what the fuck? Gamepad settings. The active gamepad can be plug-and-play. Is it not going to work here? Oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. Cancel. Um, gamepad settings? No disc. Boot by us. Natively fucking works. What? Can you do this on Windows 10? Am I am I like brain dead? Like what? I'm a little confused right now. Actually, this is this is a bigger deal than you think. This is a bigger deal than you think. Can you do this? Wait, guys, please tell me. Can you can you do this on Windows 10 with the PS5 controller? I'm not talking about Xbox One. Is a PS5 controller work? With that? That's... Now I gotta see if it has fucking rumble. Hold on. Let's go to 6 times native. 16 gigs. What's the, what's the Shin Megami Tensei rules? What does what Shin Megami Tensei say? I assume maybe the haptics are gonna be kind of a fucking deal, but... Maybe the, maybe the haptics are gonna be a bit of an issue. Okay. Game controller. Um, motion sensors. Okay. Oh my god. Even the even the, even the the six axis is working on this. What the fuck? Look at that. The six axis is working on it. Oh, that's so insane. I, I mean, with the, with, I mean, at this point, it's got to be... The six axis works. What? That's, this is like first party fucking Sony shit. Jesus Christ. Why did they, why they did this just for Linux and not Windows is just insanity to me. It's like, I don't even, I think, I, I think I'm in a dream right now. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I'm a little confused. I'm a little wild. All right, let's see. Uh, OpenGL, uh, config video, plugin settings, OpenGL, so blending unit accuracy. Where is that? To high. It's on high, flickering pool and save room, config, plugin settings, okay. Where is that? Where the fuck is it? Config, video, plugin settings, okay. First change your render to OpenGL, then uncheck a lot. Wait, yeah, uncheck. Can I get access to the fucking advanced options, please? Enable user hacks. Yeah, here it is. Uh, debug. Oh my god. I, I, it's a little, a little different than what I expected. Yeah, enable hardware hacks. Where the fuck are the hardware hacks? I, I, I'm trying to figure... Where's the 8-bit here? Is that, like, just gone now? Did they, like, fucking say screw it? Okay. Maybe it's not even an issue here. Shit. Yeah, I can't, I can't modify some of those things. Huh. Okay. Sure, we'll just we'll leave it for now then. I can't find those. Kind of just want to play the game. Uh, boot with no disk. Boot BIOS. Yes. I know that you don't need it for PS5, but guys, this is like legit this doesn't this is so weird it's like i couldn't get this running on windows and now it just works like a dream here it's just i know that it probably doesn't seem like the biggest fucking deal in the world but damn usable card size why would this work automatically manage apply should just work right Yes. 
Okay. Why won't my, why won't my uh why won't the uh, memory cards just work? I'm trying to okay whatever. Let's just go to load the ISO then. No, they're not even showing up. Oh, they work now. Cool. Bros, it works like a charm. What the fuck? Can I get into a battle? Okay, so the, 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 I don't think the haptics are working on this. Oh, god damn. Yes, I would like you to join me. Give you money? Sure, take it. Fine, okay, take more. What a bitch! Took my cash? What a, what a fucker. Oh man. Oh man, I just I just lost my cash. Dude, this works like a charm, bro. There's gotta be a way. Maybe maybe I can fix it. Maybe 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 it's like dual sense Linux uh, haptics. Oh, wait, dude, what? Guys, they're mainlining it, aren't they? That's kind of insane. No, it's even bigger than you thought. Look at that. They actually mainlined it, didn't they? Am I losing it? They're mainlining the driver for Linux. <laughs> they're not just, it's not just, it's not even on Windows. They're actually submitting it to the Linux, like fucking, they're submitting it to kernel.org. They're submitting it to the fucking developers. They wanted to get mainline directly into the kernel itself. Like part of the package. Fucking Sony's coming out with a god wow. What the fuck? Wait, currently the driver doesn't offer what? Oh, it doesn't offer the haptic feedback. Currently. That's so sick. Yeah, th dude, that's an actual developer from Sony, Roderick. Roderick Holandbrander. Brander, I hope that got it. Wow. What? Yeah, dude, this guy straight is writing it. Jesus. This guy straight wrote the whole fucking driver out. God damn. He hasn't, like, shent anything, like, haptic wise, but. God damn. <laughs> Sony gives more of a shit about the Linux driver than they do anything else. Jesus. Implement support for DualSense gamepad. Support includes buttons and sticks. <laughs> this guy's badass. This guy's fucking there, dude. I know. Well, I know it's cheaper to. De I mean, it, you know, it's not cheaper to develop for either or. I mean, you can. It's cheaper to develop within Linux, but like. They didn't make a Windows 10 driver and call it a day. <laughs> so impressed. I'm actually super duper impressed. That's so fucking sick for Sony. Do you think it works on games though? Like if I... Wait, can I play Yakuza? Wait a minute. This is the ultimate test. This is the ultimate fucking test. Hold on. Do you think it just works on a game? Wait, watch. It's going to be insane if it does. Wait a minute.
That's fucking cool, dude. But the D-pad isn't really working for some fucking reason. I don't know what that's all about. Oh my god. What in the fuck, bro? Uh, is it integrated into the kernel? I don't know if it is integrated. I could really just remove the DKMS and we could just see if it's... He said it's built into the future. When it gets integrated into the kernel, I can just remove the DKMS. Okay, so... Ah, this is where the thing is. So, the actual button placements of it are a bit all over the fucking place. So, it's like... The R1 button, RL1 is kind of like the start, but like general placement is there. Wait, wait, can I, can I uh, modify the exact mappings on Steam, right? Controller configuration, wait a minute. Wait a minute, this is, this is something that's doable. Where's controller configuration disabled? For the PlayStation, PlayStation must be enabled in Steam's main controller settings and support must be enabled under the... What? What the fuck is this? So it must be enabled in Steam's main controller settings. What does it mean by main controller setting? Dude, it literally just, just show, it shows the exact placement. What? It, it Even Steam knows that I'm using it. So hold on, go to Steam's... What? Settings. Um, controller. General controller settings, okay. It doesn't even do this. Wait, it doesn't even do this in Windows 10, does it? What? Controller LED light. It's not changing that. Oh, here it is. Okay, let's try the... Okay, move. Oh, what? Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, hold on. How do you, how do you map it directly to, like, match the Xbox? Wait a minute. There's a way to fucking do this. Style of input. Uh, not touch menu. Left trigger. These are like the fucking DualShock 4 controllers. It's not it's not going to work for that. Like, what's funny is it detects every button just fine. I don't, I, I'll be honest, I have no idea how the fuck this works. <laughs> I, feel, I feel so confused. Thank you. 
Yeah, maybe, maybe, hold on a second. Oh shit, now it does change fucking color. Now, now it does fucking change. The, yeah, see, look at that, it's changing fucking colors. Look at that, it's actually, it's actually fucking, ste even steam's so into it. Look at that, you can see it change the fucking color of the actual fucking dealio. That's so weird. What? Submit that, I guess. Even the haptic's working now. Listen! Listen, even the haptic works. <laughs> what the fuck? They got the haptics working on it now. This is so fucking insane. Okay. Maybe we'll like fucking end the game right now? Alt F4. I have to go through every stupid thing again, don't I? So obviously the 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 fucking the vibrator the vibration works on this. Sorry, they did they didn't fucking. What? I'm so genuinely wilded right now. What the fuck? Oh, now fucking now now it's like screwing up for me. It's like I think it's cuz it's setting this DualShock 4 scheme that it's fucking up everything. Let me just do templates, hold on. Sure, here we go. I'm like so genuinely like fucking I don't even understand what Steam is trying to do anymore, man. Gamepad, yeah. It's like legit fucking broken now. Bro, Steam, what are you on? Use default settings, okay. You're right, it might just be that like dual sense is like fucking they're turning into a DS four controller. Enable Steam input? Sure. Yeah, this is harder than the Arch Linux installs trying to get the fucking controller to operate. It's like the harder aspect.
All right, well, since the dual sense is not working to the fucking degree that it should here with these games, let me try with the Xbox One controller. All right, something like this. So Xbox One controllers have like the same fucking dealio. You can just sort of like, uh, you can just directly Bluetooth them in. And I think they just work, right? Has failed. Well, Arch Linux repository probably has it. Arch Linux Xbox One controller. Oh, game pads. Wait, did they have something with the PlayStation 5? No. Xbox One. Uh, this is supported by the kernel and should work without anything. Oh, with Bluetooth, though. Uh, echo this into the system. Oh, okay. Uh... I know it's going right into the system module. Oh, fucking Christ, dude. Sure. Echo, one, sys, module, Bluetooth, parameters, disable ERTM. What? Okay, motherfucker. Yeah, I think it's just like fucking because it only because it because it doesn't it's it's not on Windows yet. I don't think fucking Steam is really on the on the board for caring too much about it. All right, should work. There it is, works. One line change. Yeah, it worked, but it's. I think it's because, like, fucking, since it's not even on Windows, Steam doesn't even fucking bother trying to it. No, I don't want to fucking play in big picture mode. Can we not do this today? Let me fucking steal. Oh, my God. Steam, stop. Steam, I don't give a fuck about big picture mode, okay? If I gave a shit, I'd use it. It's, like, locked me out. Motherfucker. Here it is. Don't show it again. Never. Never deal with it. Bullshit. I think I'm gonna need to restart. Oh, wait. Alright, basic Xbox One controller shit. That's some like aggressive shit. It's like we 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 can make your computer look like a console. Okay, relax, game shit. I don't need all that. I don't need this extra stress in my fucking life with this fucking game, dude. Real Yakuza, use a gamepad. Whoa. Now even the Xbox One controller isn't fucking working. What? Controller configuration. Bro, I think it's like ridiculously fucked up somewhere. <laughs> it was working. It ain't working right now. Is that a... Uh... Is that fucking normal? It's like a real buggy fucking game. Isn't it? Huh. That's a, real, that's a real buggy game. <laughs> Maybe I'll disable PlayStation controller support. Oh, I mean, it starts up big picture just fucking fine. Obviously, the controller's working. How about exit Steam? Start up Steam now. I'll continue it sometime, maybe tomorrow. Watch this just being Steam being fucking Steam. It all happened when I enabled this bullshit through this fucking crap. Just watch. I 100% guarantee it. This is what happened. 
Just watch. Just disable that shit. Disable all of Steam's bullshit and just watch. Just watch it work. I'm right now for emotes for both the YouTube and Twitch stream channels. I swear to God. Oh my god, dude. Fuck you, Steam. Holy shit. They're the ones that got in the fucking way. As soon as I enabled the fucking Steam settings, it all went to shit. It all went to shit, didn't it? Holy fuck, dude. God damn. God damn. It all went to shit. I let, I let Steam have its fucking day. <laughs> no, the PS5 controller is still going to have the weird maps, but at least I know, like, never to fucking enable the Steam settings, dude. You know what it is? It might be that I'm running... I don't know. No, it wouldn't be the fact that I'm running on Linux, because this is a Linux build of Steam, so it's like, unless the developers were losing their fucking shit, maybe. I bothered because I thought maybe it would enable the PlayStation games to work just fine, but you know, clearly not. Whoa, no more dizzy mode anymore, dude. I want you guys to remember, I'm playing with an Xbox One controller natively on Linux while running a Windows 10 game on Linux through a compatibility layer. We, we have officially fucking crossed the beams to no dimension. If I turn off V-Sync, what do you think the frame rate's gonna fucking be on this? To be fair though, I always prefer the Xbox One controller to like anything else, so it's not a fucking loss for me. Like I like the PlayStation controllers, but I actually admit even as a PlayStation guy, Xbox makes the fucking proper controller in my opinion. Uh, graphic quality, advanced, vertical sync, and disable that shit. Wait, does V-Sync not even fucking matter on this? Oh, it's still enabled. Fuck off. Bro! 240 FPS hitting the cap! <laughs> like a champ boss! Yeah, but Linux can't run games as good as Windows, says the Windows 10 fan. Bro, what are you talking about? Yeah, I know, I know not every game can run, but goddamn! We're hitting that frame cap, boys! I'm gonna get myself a gaming monitor. Fuck your mom with it, dude. Linux people are poor. They don't understand. I'm pay for Windows, consume product, support Microsoft. You know, they don't fucking deserve it. That's goddamn shit. Max the fuck. I mean, this game's not hard to max out, but hey, motherfucker, like, how dare you game on a poor people operating system, okay? Consume Windows! It's like, I know Linux ain't perfect. I know half my shit doesn't want to work in it sometimes, but goddamn, it's the future and I support it. I ain't fucking... I'm not activating Windows anymore. There's better options. I got a virus on my Windows computer, but that's okay. Microsoft will learn. <laughs> it's, called, it's, called, it's, called, it's called being fucking... It's called, it's called being a Linux poor man and having the viruses not target you. It's like, imagine paying for an operating system that is fucking legacy shit software at the end of the day. The only reason Windows is around is because of legacy shit. Like, what, you know, now the new generation is being trained on fucking Chromebooks and all that stuff. iPads, iOS devices, Android. I almost see potentially in the future that Linux will be the thing. Like, if you, if you want to get into my personal belief... With kids nowadays using Windows less and less and less. Because, let's be real, Windows 10 is only there because of us gamers and, like, fucking people that require Adobe Premiere and all that shit. And some specialized software. 
which can also be used on Linux if they put some time and appropriate resources to it, but it's like, going further into it, Etsy Linux in the future. It's like somebody can be like, Linux cucks coping, but at the same time, like, listen boys, I run Windows 10 in a VM, I'm not even fucking immune from any of that shit, I don't care. I'm just saying, I have the best of every fucking world in my system, dude. I can run Windows 10 and Linux. And Mac! It's like, imagine having an update system that fucks your entire computer life up. Couldn't be me. You know the best part about Windows 10? Imagine having 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 all that bullshit uh, uh, telemetry running. It's like, yeah, we're collecting diagnostic data. And so people are like, yeah, I know commands that can turn it off. You know they turn it back on after every fucking update though, right? Like I don't I don't want I don't want you to I don't want you to feel like a, I don't want you to feel like an idiot there. But you do realize they turn that shit back on every time you update the system, right? Yeah, but what are you trying to hide from the system? Bro, if I build a computer and I buy an operating system, I don't want the operating system fucking grabbing diagnostic data. Motherfucker, pay me for the diagnostic data, then we'll talk. What the fuck? Pay me for the market data and then we'll talk about it. But until then, you can eat my asshole. What the fuck? How do, you, how do you pay for an operating system and then still let them fucking cuck you? Like, what? That's just insanity. It's like, here, Microsoft, here's $100 for a license or whatever gray market key you get off fucking eBay. Can we still grab that off of you? Please? I love how they give you the option. We're going to steal your data. We're going to steal your data even harder. Like, what? And then I love the other one where it's like fucking, um, you don't want them to take your data? We'll give them $300 for an enterprise grade version. You don't know why the enterprise grade version of Windows exists? Because if fucking Windows started collecting diagnostic data from a Fortune 500 company, that Fortune 500 company wouldn't fucking buy from Microsoft ever. Okay? But you can see what diagnostic data we take. Okay. I'm sure that's complete fucking honest right there. I'm sure you're true and honest about it. Hey guys, here's Microsoft Office for $300 a year. Imagine not using the Google web services. Yeah, but Microsoft has a couple features that Google will make. Okay, motherfucker, you're not using those features for it to be worth a goddamn. Let's be fucking real. It doesn't matter. What do you mean, okay, no matter what, they'll take data? I'm, you know why I use Arch Linux? I control exactly what goes in and out of this fucking computer. They can't take your data if you're using things like Linux. You can control exactly what every service, what every program does on an exact kernel level, okay? you Trust me, they're not going to be able to take your data if you know what you're doing. This is coming from somebody that, that, that knows exactly what I'm talking about. Like Windows? I can't control all of Windows. I can't control all of Mac. Thank you, Megastar, for the five tier gift sub. With Linux? Bro, I can control exactly what the fuck this system does. Like, I look I look through... I, can, I know exactly what this fucking system does from a daily basis. Day fucking one. This is what I wish people took more info out of. It's like learning how to control the data that gets leaked out. You know, like, no matter what, people will get your data, I agree. But how much of it you're willing to give, it really shows, it, you know, how much you care about your freedoms and your privacy and shit. What's the point of freedom in a world where you have to give away your fucking data to some goddamn company that fucking runs your life? It's like, you know why I care about my data? It's because I care about shit like my freedom and stuff, man. It's because I care about fucking being an individual and holding it and all that nonsense. I don't like giving away shit if I don't have to. You know? It's the basis for where we live and shit, dude. Yeah. 
It's like, you know why I tell the homeowners association and like all these people to go fuck themselves? I'm glad you mentioned that in the chat. It's because why? It's my fucking life and it's my property and it's my shit. I don't need to fucking, you know, give any answers to anybody unless I want to. You know? Motherfucker, the whole data fight that we talk about nowadays, have you ever seen what Edward Snowden showed to the world? He, It's all out there. Bro, like the amount of control and the amount of surveillance, like, you feel personally comfortable with that? Like, you're okay? Like, you're okay with the fact that they can just, like, fucking backdoor into your systems and, like, look through your data and, like, grab whatever you have? Like, you're personally okay with that. You're okay with somebody sitting in your fucking house 24-7 hearing everything you say? Looking at everything you do, browsing through your private life, analyzing the photos of you and your personal family members and friends? You're fucking dipshit then, I'm just saying. Like, I don't feel comfortable with that. No one should. People always talk about how the Chinese surveillance like their people. America's just as bad. Canada's just as bad. Why are people growing okay with it? It's like the apathy makes no sense to me. Especially in a world where data is more valuable than the person. Like you live, like in, in 20 fucking 21, your data footprint is more valuable than you. And the problem is, when the government is backdooring your operating systems, those backdoors can be exploited by any hacker group out there. What's the fucking point? You know, if Apple, you know why Apple doesn't like to give backdoors to the FBI? Because if Apple gave a backdoor to the FBI, it would be exploited and everyone's iPhone would be screwed over. I mean, if they, they value the privacy argument, and I respect that shit. And the whole terrorism argument, you want to be honest about it? How many people have, there's more people that die from natural disasters, car accidents, than fucking terror attacks every day. It doesn't help protect you against the idea, okay? Just get, governments abuse the surveillance so much more than stopping actual criminals and terrorists. If people looked more into this shit, it would like open their fucking eyes as well. Why do you think in 20 fucking 21, terror cells and all these organizations exist and the government still hasn't done anything yet to stop them legitimately? Like, be honest with it, okay? Like, you've got billion dollar terror cartels. How do you think billion dollar terror cartels have access to US Humvees and weapons so fucking easily? Like, ever ask yourself, it's like, yeah, we gotta stop drug cartels. How the fuck do drug cartels get high-end weaponry so fucking easily? How is it that drug cartels, terror organizations, get all the high-end stuff so fucking easily? How? It has to be because they get it from some fucking high vendor. You, it's not that just because you have money, you have to have the connection that hooks you up with those high-end weapons, intel, all that shit. Where do you think that fucking connection happens? Come on. It's like, you know why crime, cartels, terrorism doesn't get stopped? It's because they're in bed with the fucking people that try to at least publicly say they stop them. Bribes get paid, they have connections on the inside, there's corruption, like... You know why cartels operate so fucking easily? It's because they fucking... It's because half the people on, on the side of the border that wants to stop them are in on the take. Or they're too fucking scared to go against them. Do you honestly believe that drug cartels in Mexico and shit like that and terror groups would be so fucking good if they didn't have connections on the inside? Come on, man. What the fuck? There's so much surveillance now that a terrorist attack could be stopped a year in fucking advance. So I don't believe the whole argument. I just think spying on people is just too bad. Like, it's just not enough. It's too wild, man. I mean, I, I guess I went off on a long-winded tangent. I don't know how Twitch fucking feels about that, but like... That's just where I'm at, man. Oh, shit, I missed that. <laughs> then again, man, I'm kind of an optimistic motherfucker. I wish people in the world just got fucking along more. Didn't register that hold? What the fuck? Gross. 
It's like what I said, like, the other day, right? Like, fucking... I never understand how, like, fucking shit like racism and all that stuff exists. Like, it just has to be fucking stupidity in 2021, where people feel that they're somehow superior to everyone else for some fucking stupid reason. You know? I wish more people just play fucking video games, dude. Like, just sit down, fucking play a video game, and quit worrying about fucking bullshit that you don't understand, you know? Like, you know how many fucking, like, dipshits you watch on the internet on YouTube? Because there's, like, all these fucking closet racist channels now. And it's like, they're fucking... Dude, you know the best part is, every time now, every time I see, like, a chick character get put into a video game, I cum my pants because I just, like, go on YouTube and look at all the fucking, like, f like gaming channels shit themselves sometimes. It's like, how dare they introduce that? It's fucking insane, you know what I mean? Somehow, like, I, I just get straight enjoyment seeing, like, the salt on the internet. Maybe that's like the 4chan troll in me, where it's like, it's just fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. Like, every time, there's like, every time, any time, there's like some fucking crazy, like, what they, any time, there's like, any fucking crazy shit that happens in the world of media that pisses off some of these, like, crazy channels, I always go on, just to, just to fuck, just to fucking laugh at it. It's the fucking most funniest shit. And you can't say it's not funny. You can't say it's not funny to see that. Motherfuckers really be out there trying to fucking, you know. How did you know Dame Dane was happening? Yeah, I mean, it is. <laughs> like, at the end of the day, I just don't even fucking care. Like, you know how fucking annoying it is to go on? And it's like, sometimes they have, like... Like, they introduce a gay character on a television so show. And, like, there's all these channels on YouTube who are like... Oh man, dude, I gotta see Virtue Signal. What's wrong with that? I'm like, dude, why do I care? Like, why is it so bad that, like, why why is it that anytime, like, a gay character or a chick gets put into a television show, dude, some of these channels, like, lose their shit. Like, mentally, like, fucking lose it. Like, I don't even get it sometimes. Like, it's just like, are you just trying to fucking get mad? I don't even care, dude. It's just insane, dude. That's all I care about, though. You're absolutely right, Greek Yogurt. Anytime they introduce a character, I just want them to have depth in it. That's all I care. Like, if it's a good written character, it's a good written character, you know? And sometimes they are. You know the thing is, like, sometimes you come across fucking channels that, like, have never played a game, but they, like, absolutely shit on the product just before they play it, right? Like, they're like, this character is just a fucking, you know, brownie point thing, and it's like, you actually play the game, and it's not even like that. And it's like, it's so fucking evident they've never played the fucking game ever. So it is what it is. Is it, people just lose, like, nowadays, like, fucking both sides lose their shit over the dumbest things. I just like laughing at everything. Like, it's just so fucking hilarious to witness. Like, you, you can't be this fucking, like... You can't, you can't be like this. Anyways, yeah, this game runs fucking smooth, though, dude. You know what, man? You know my philosophy in life is just let everyone live and enjoy it. When I saw that Wim Exen thing by Twitch, I was like, you know how much that pissed me off? Because it's like, it's like, listen, dude, I know I don't talk about this shit a whole lot, but like when it comes to people who are like, you know, transgender, people in that category, people like, you know, fucking minorities and shit like that. First off, I got to be honest with you, I get really fucking pissed when somebody gets offended for my Indian ass. Like, it just pisses me off so much. It's like, I'm not a fucking child, okay? If I get offended, I'll be fucking offended. Simple as it is. But the thing that fucking pisses me off the most is that, like, in my opinion, you know, a lot of people do the best that they can to have a good life. When I look at people who are like, like, for example, the Twitch thing, right? Like, you know how many motherfuckers live their entire life not feeling happy, okay? Like, I'm lucky enough to not have any of those, like, issues where I have to, like, worry about, you know, who I am as a person, uh, who I am for, like, fucking... Like, I, I don't, I'm lucky, to be honest, like, I don't have to worry about my identity because I'm, like, happy as I am. But there's a lot of people who live their entire fucking life depressed, feeling really bad because they don't know what the fuck they are. They don't know. They're conflicted inside. 
So it's like when they finally get a chance to be fucking happy, you got Twitch over here and they're fucking infinite wisdom <laughs> making them feel like shit again. Like, you know, the whole point of people who are like transgender was that they didn't have to fucking worry about like, they didn't have to be fucking, you know, they could be, they could be women, you know, if they wanted to. And now you got Twitch over here. It's like, no, 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 you're not really there. We're just, we're just gonna, we're just gonna call you fucking, we're just gonna call you this like off-brand women term. Cause you're not us. Like, you know how fucking offensive that is shit? Like, are you fucking stupid? So dumb with these people, man. So dumb with them, like... It's like these same people try to act all offended for everyone. They try to act like, you know, they're on... Like, it's just, you're not on our side. You're not there. You're just somebody who's trying to fucking get some brownie points for whatever bullshit. How about just like le how about just like letting people be who they are and having them live their life the way they want to? Like I've never understand why it pisses people off. You know when it comes to people who are you know, you know why why like if somebody just wants to be called what they are like, you come across motherfuckers who are like I I'm not I'm 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 not gonna fucking you know give you the five seconds of fucking respect. It's like. You know, somebody tells me that they f they have this pronoun. They have it's like when I see the pronouns in the bio and people like discount that and they laugh at you. I'm like, why? Like, what does that? Ma How does that affect your fucking life? Like I'm <laughs> like people who put pronouns in their bio. I'm like, go for it. I don't fucking care. I don't put pronouns in my bio because I don't. You know, it's not really my thing. I don't need to. Later on, I found out is to make people feel comfortable. I still don't do it. Like it's not really my thing. Like I don't get into it. But like for the someone that does it. Like, when I go on Twitter and it's like, ah, you put your pronouns in the bio, you're a fucking dipshit. I'm like, why? Why is that? Why is that so fucking... Why does that hurt you? Like, I... Like... <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Just live your life the way you want to fucking live it, dude. It's like, it doesn't affect your life. It doesn't matter, okay? It literally makes them feel better, and that's all it is. It's like, how is their fucking opinion invalidated because they put pronouns in the bio of their system? You know, all the people who are like the freedom of speech bullshit, you know, there's also something called freedom of expression, right? It's like, it's like people who say freedom of speech have no fucking idea what they're talking about half the time, because it's like, you know when you get banned off a of social media platform for being a fucking dipshit? It's called freedom of association. Like, you want to fucking be all about the Bill of Rights? You want to be all about the Constitution, dumbass? How about you read the whole fucking thing, right? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, I don't get it. I just don't understand. Like, somebody puts, like, whatever fucking political affiliation in their thing, and, like, some the other person has to get fucking pissed about it, or whatever. It's like, dude, what does it matter for you? I don't care. The problem is, like, nowadays, you can't even have a discussion around people, because it's like, you're either fucking extreme on one end or the other. That's why I don't get into it. The only reason I talk about this is because I still have, like, a vested interest. Like, I think I told you guys this a lot, but, like, my dream career was always, like, a lawyer, but I can't be one anymore. Like, you know back to be a lawyer you, you need you need some money in your life <laughs> didn't have that back in the day so you know it never really happened but i definitely had an interest in it for a while to this day i still think i'd be a fucking great lawyer but you know life changes life takes you in different paths ended up being an engineer instead you know god man someday some days i wish that i always think about it too to my to my end thoughts on starlink Interesting connect. I mean, if Elon Musk pulls it off, changes the whole fucking game. But I feel like he has a ways to go with uh, with current like you know, with current um, uh, telecom providers. Because he he could literally end telecom like internet wise if he does and gets away with it. You know, the thing is, like, nuance is pretty fucking dead these days. To be nuanced, you have to have, like, a fucking brain. You have to be able to think. To be nuanced, you just have to be a fucking mature person. Like, pe people immediately put you into a camp and everything if you, like, slightly disagree with them. It's like, when I made that tweet where it's like, why does Nazi trend every week? It's like, the thing that pisses me off the most about that shit, too, is how watered down the word, like, Nazi is, you know? Like, there are motherfuckers out there who are, like, just literally... <laughs> like there, there are people out there. It's like, oh, you disagree with me? You're a fucking Nazi. I'm like, do you know how evil the Nazis actually were? Like, why are you just equating everyone to that? 
Like, do you actually know your fucking history, dipshit? Those people are legitimately fucking evil. Are you, are you brain dead? Like, motherfucker, they're, they're bad people, alright? Not everyone is there. You're really watering down that fucking bullshit. I don't know, man. It's it's weird. Oh, yeah, I should change the category. Man, it's like when you start playing this game, you really get into it. Can I test FF15? That's like a really heavy fucking game on here, man. That's like a really heavy bastard of a game. I'm gonna try testing that. It's 86 gigabytes. Do I got a PS5? Yeah. Am I from West Bengal? No, I'm luck now. Uttar Pradesh. Nah, dude. Pe people are just people are fucking insane, dude. They they. It's all. It's you know. A lot of it is just fucking. It's a. Uh, it's the. It's the Olympics of getting fucking offended. So I got. I gotta be fucking. I gotta be pissed. Like, just go on the internet, dude. Like, just look at all this YouTube shit. Like, immediately. Oh, why am I on Firefox? I use Brave now. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't be here if I was a lawyer, you know? Life would take me in a different fucking direction. Where's that? Where's that shit? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fucking, I gotta, I gotta see this. This is the best. Hold on. Where's the, uh, where, like, watch Twitch? You can just, you can just see the fucking anger. Twitch did an oopsie. Oh, man, this is everywhere. God damn. I'm gonna be late on my videos always. <laughs> We're downloading a, uh, Final Fantasy. Can I, can I play a game while it's also downloading? Properties. Uh, updates. Always a lot of background downloads. Oh no, it's for games. Okay. I don't want to see the Elden Ring shit at all, man. I don't want to see Elden Ring until it comes out. Let me just be fucking real with you guys. I want to play that game when it comes out. And I'm blinding myself completely from any footage. Because uh, I fucking hate the idea. I hate fucking playing that game. Like, uh, I, I, I hate the idea of like just... Honestly, honestly, it really ruins the experience for me on video games. Oh, are there certain Reddits I follow? Oh, fuck. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, fuck. You guys, you guys want to see, like, the fucking bandage right there? It's like, I don't know if you guys can see it, but, like, I've got, like, a fucking bandage over here, dude. Like, it's a little drone. It's still, it's a little, like, fucking, it's a little hole in me. Fuck, bro. What's up with Mac Gaming? I know the Mac Gaming guys got pissed because I laughed at them, but I mean, like, can you blame me? <laughs> you guys were jerking off to playing San Andreas in 2020, though. <laughs> what is up with the Mac Gaming? I feel like I was super toxic, though. Let me see what the Mac Gamers are saying now. Minecraft resolution won't change from 4K to 1080p. Okay, they can run Minecraft in 4K. Don't fucking say anything. Is it easy to be an engineer? No, being an engineer is difficult anywhere. I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. Oh, they have Dirt 4? Oh, no fucking way. This is actually kind of cool. So this is running on ARM? No way. That's actually kind of badass. So this is running on the new processors that Apple has, the M1. So I want to see the footage on this. This would be kind of cool. That's not bad. That's on... Oh, wait. You guys can't see it. Fuck. Fuck, wait. This is not bad. That's on the new M1 Max, guys. Dude, the M1 Max are impressive. Look at that. That's on an ARM processor, guys. Wow. That's really good. You know, this is what excites me. I might buy a MacBook now because I might buy a Mac 
now that Apple's making their own processors. I feel like now that they switched off Intel, Apple's going ham. Like, they already fucking take over the iPhone. Like, they already take over the mobile CPU market and how they operate this shit. Now it's kind of crazy with their uh, processors here, guys. I'm kind of fucking impressed, man. You, 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 can't, you can't even be mad at Apple, dude. They're fucking... Now, now it's like, now their overpriced fucking value makes sense. Because they actually are putting real effort into it. No, but I mean, like, when they're, when they're designing their own silicon, impressive, dude. Impressive shit. Is there more games from them? Do they have Dolphin on here? That's crazy. They have Oh, they probably have like the arm build of Dolphin. How much how much is a how much is an Apple fucking how much is their M1 Pro? How much is the M1? I got to switch to dark mode. How much is the uh, where do I get the dark where do I get the dark mode plugin? Sorry, guys. Oh, here it is. There it is. Is this really like fucking Dark Raider though? Oh, perfect. Okay. The Macs are ridiculously good value. Now you can't call it. Yeah, let's see. MacBook Air from $9.99. Wait, I, I want Canadian prices. I don't want to see just US price. To be fair, though, when I bought my iPhone, I would say that it's a pretty good price now. I think the iPhone is worth it. Jesus Christ, man. Is this going to fucking... Yeah, here it is. Apple. Oh, it was already in Canadian. It was already Canadian. Fuck. All right, let's see. M1 MacBook Air, $1299 MacBook Pro, uh, Mac Mini. Yeah, for 900 bucks, that's the mini version, right? What about the Pro, though? I want to see how much the uh, MacBook Pro is. So this is like the whole laptop 16-incher. So the 16-inch side, they don't come with the fucking M1 processor. So that's kind of a fucking letdown. You would expect that. You would expect in the bigger one, like the... Ugh. You would expect for the 16-inch, they might do that. So M1, 1699, 8 gigs unified memory, 256 SSD storage... A little overpriced, but that processor is kind of what you're fucking paying for, I think. You also got to understand, since it's an ARM processor, this has to have, like, at least a fucking 20 to 25-hour battery life. Yeah, holy shit. That's not fucking bad, guys. 21-hour battery life? 20-hour, 20, 25-hour battery life? That's worth the $16.99, dude. That's actually not bad at all. That's what I want, is 8 gigs. The I wonder if you can, like, upgrade the 8 gigs. Let me see that. Oh, you can add 250 for the 16 gig. I'd pay 250 for the fucking memory at least. The RAM though. I mean the SSD storage is like a little fucking Huh. Yeah, the RAM is soldered in this case. It's soldered on. I'd buy it. Yeah, the repair on Apple is kind of shit. How much is... The, wait, 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 wait. Instead of the MacBook Pro, since I already have a pretty good laptop, I want to see the Mac Mini. Like I said, man, I like the Apple products that Apple, like, fully designs themselves. You know, like, an Intel processor Mac, kind of fucking stupid. Because uh, I can buy a better PC. But if they make fucking equivalent silicon and better, easily right there. 
Wow, their web page is crashing hard. I think it's this fucking component, maybe. Yeah, that's almost done. Well, not almost, but. <laughs> CPAC National Anthem is trending? Jesus. God damn. I think this fucking, I think this uh, extension is really hurting it. Yeah, no, the extension, the extension itself is hurting it. Jesus. Uh, I put the extension on here, but I think it's, I think it's kind of hurting it a little bit. Turn it off. Jesus Christ, Apple, what happened? Mac, here it is. For six ninety nine, let's see this. Ooh, fuck me. Fuck me. Turn it on. All right. Apple M1 with eight core CPU and eight core GPU, uh, five twelve storage, eight gigs unified RAM. So if you got that one right there with five hundred and twelve gigs of SSD storage. Uh, no, this is uh, this is Canadian, I think. Prices. Where do I check if it's Canadian? Hold on. Oh, it's Apple fucking... Sh God, give me the Canadian version, man. Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if it's fucking there. Yeah, 8, 9... No, that dog, that's fucking Canadian, though. Yeah, Canadian shop, that's... No, no, you're right. It's eight ninety nine there. So eleven forty nine Canadian right there. And uh so sixteen gigs if I add two fifty to that. Dog, that's not bad. That's not bad for a desktop that's giving good per That's not so bad, actually. How much is the basic fucking laptop, though? If the chip is the same... Yeah, I remember when you can update the Mac Mini entirely on your own volition, and then they fucking fucked you. Jesus Christ. This site does not work. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to fucking... We're gonna, we're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. How much is the Air? Wait a fucking minute. Is this the same thing as the fucking MacBook Pro? Wait just a fuck. No, wait a minute. Wait a fucking minute. Retina display? What? No fan. So you probably, you probably, you probably can't do video production work on the... Wait, does Mac... Hold on. Apple M1 Adobe Premiere. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Does this exist? What's this guy's video? Right. Tell you the champs and yes, this changes everything. This is MacBook I Air. I to commit to an M1 Mac just because for what I do, pretty much, you know... I have to use Premiere, stuff like that. And yeah, the M1 Max. Run. Make sure you subscribe because I do have my one month review on this and I went all native. It'll work. What the fuck? By the way, this project wait a minute, safe. dog. Wait a second. Look at the tracking. What the here, fuck? You can see there is some color adjustment and a lot applied there. Ah. Uh, okay, so it's all there. Lumetri adjustment right. layers. So, the Max have always been the scrub master. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. He's on full Max res, too. Scrub master. Look at this. What the f That's full yeah. res? Look at that. Whoa, look how fast and smooth that This is, is through scrub emulation, I'm pretty master. sure. I think he's using the Rosetta thing, where he, like, translates between x86 to GPU ARM. Course. Base model. What's the resolution Whoa. on fucking, Wasn't on the, like on the, on the, the actual, like, deal, though? Right and integrated graphics forget about it you're not going to do that on you know intel 11th generation or even the you know the radeon graphics on the 4800u or something like that forget about it this is like a discrete graphics the performance of that that scrubbing this is 4k lot color correction 
Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's not it might be it the is. native ARM yeah, build. You think it's like a... Online, but I'll just add a bit of 6K content. Right, yeah, it's so the now, beta, so I'll it's probably a native ARM build. Content. Right, so Brother, what the fuck? This is still a 4K timeline, but this is 6K content. 6K? That He's cool. fucking... Dude, I'm, I, think, I think this is trolls. He's got 6K training. video so he's seeking through? What? Is. That's not... This is, I'll remind you. What? 6K, that has to be fucking transcoded. No he's pro no, it no doesn't problem. even look like he's working on a proxy. ProRes the same. It doesn't scrub like the 4K, like the butter machine here. But still... <laughs> that that shit sucks. That has to be fake. What the nice fuck? Smooth. Actually, I'd say it is... Pretty much the same as that. It's just not much movement in there. Bro, I know that it's a goddamn but Apple no product. Problem, Jeez. So let's see if it plays back this footage now. Look here for the green That's an air, by the way, too. It's not even on like a see? pro with like extra cooling. Turn that down. It plays back 4K content. H.264. LUT. Color correction applied. Okay, wait, wait, no. He said 4K no content. Problem. But he also said H.264. Guys, he's running. It's not a proxy. Dude's running fucking compressed video at normal now, speed. What? Will struggle to do that. That's it's fucking insane. Generation will struggle to do that. Oh my god. Leon you Lush, brother. What's what up, bro? Subscribe with the prime, dude. I'm about, I'm about to end the stream, but I'm jacking <laughs> right off the fucking... This, this new you, Apple you know, MacBook beta, that's just right. a fucking edit Don't beast. Send. That's 4K, dude. That's 4 that fucking K. Is because of RAM. You're a sexy so fuck, Ram. Jesus Pro Christ. Again. Do stay tuned because I do have the one month review of this MacBook Air and I went all night. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I month. feel like he's either lying hardcore. I had a crash before and reported it. <laughs> it's like I had one crash. He had like one crash going on. What a man. What a fucking man, dude. That's great. There's no way. Wait, Apple MacBook uh, chip is not for it. This Welcome is John's, John's Films. Why? Three reasons I won't buy. Uh, despite. Okay. What? Chip. Did, reason one. Okay, let's watch this. Ultra. Ultra. Ultra cool. Uh, in fact, it's been designed with eight cores and then seven or eight cores worth of GPU processing power. The eight cores are not all created equally, though. Much like we've seen in cell phones over the last five years. The eight cores aren't the fucking same thing on a PC either. You do realize this, right? Like, some cores, what? They've gone to a big little architecture where they have some big cores, which are meant for big time work. And they've got little cores, which might be good for background tasks or low power. If the program is made properly, it doesn't fucking matter how the cores are placed. Because they could, they could, they could offload the background shit to like the lower end cores and keep what? Does this guy understand how fucking programming works? Or usage. Like and I get that you needed. fucking spent the money on the RGB RAM, but like, does this guy have any fucking idea? Extending the MacBooks that you see, and that's why you've seen this chip come out in laptops first, because it's truly built for that. And that's reason number one, I'm not going to be buying it for video editing. For one, if I'm editing truly, I'm sitting at a desktop workstation with a nice large monitor, and I've got some room to stretch, so why not use a lot? Does, uh, does he know that fucking laptops come with HDMI ports and shit? You know, my laptop right here is connected to an eGPU that has the ability to fucking have four monitors connected. What? Does he, does he like, what, what fucking laptop did he use? What laptop was he using? What the fuck? <laughs> like, I get maybe like the cheaper laptops don't, but like production laptops, like fucking, I think the MacBook Pro is an HDMI out or at least a fucking, at least something. Motherfucker, every gaming laptop has an HDMI out. Is he fucking out of his mind? What? A large machine like I've got behind me. The second reason that I'm not interested in it for video editing is I don't think that it's going to handle my B-RAW footage as well as the benchmarks might show. Sure, not many people have touched B-RAW with it, but 
here's the real problem. It's not the processor and the processing power involved in editing B-Raw. In fact, B-Raw is pretty easy for the machine to cut as long as it's got enough pipeline that is data feed coming off the disks and in memory to be able to store it for working. That's the problem. The problem is there's only eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM. And not only is that just eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM, like memory, working storage, it's unified memory. So you only use it with the processor, but you also use it with the GPU. And what I've seen from Resolve is it will very often load your timeline into video memory. And then when it's caching some of those effects, the more difficult effects or larger textures get stored in memory as well, in the graphics memory. And then once they're rendered into something that's on your timeline and you see the timeline caching go, it'll be both cached to disk at that point, but cached into your memory. And if you're filling up your memory with textures, with large frame sizes, with large work like B-Raw, there's not going to be enough memory in the system to be able to handle all of those needs. And so I'm really concerned. What? What? Wait, 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 what? Wait. Does he not understand like caching and memory? Like, first off, that's not even that big of a deal. Okay, fine. A, Mac OS is intelligent enough to handle memory appropriately, okay? So even if you max out the memory, what's it going to do? So use the onboard swap file that's on the fucking SSD that's also soldered onto the motherboard? What kind of a... That doesn't make any sense. That means the fucking... If, we, if we're going to be completely fucking honest here, it probably has a better, like, what does this guy say, flow? Like, better connection? Like, better everything than than most PCs anyways, like most desktops, most laptops even. Like, that doesn't fucking make any sense. Because if the idea is that bandwidth is your problem, everything is unified anyway. So it's like, you've already got an operating system that is one-to-one, -one, like, fucking mapped for that hardware specifically, okay? And then you've also got hardware that's just constantly flowing together easily. It's not like there's a fucking limitation in, like, What? Am I am I am I wrong? Like, I, am I wrong? Am I the one in the wrong here? Or what's going on? Like, it just doesn't fucking. I mean, I'll watch the Linus Tech Tips video, but it's like, am I am I like am I insane? Like, am I the one that's in the wrong? Like, what the fuck? Ah, oh. like I know that Unified has the issue. I I know that it, I know that's exactly why we have different CPU L1, L2, and all that stuff. But it's like, when it comes to the system over here. I like to think that Apple stress tested it a little bit, you know? Like, I like to think that Apple... I, I don't know where... I don't know about the bottlenecks. I mean, then again, I have to look deep into the system anyways. But, like, from what they've made, it seems like... It seems like these would be issues relatively of the past. And the other thing is, it's like... The other thing that I also have to understand is that... If you're dealing with an ARM-based build of the application you would think that adobe themselves would factor in unified memory and like how to handle like i don't know about true video editing on these things and i don't believe that that's what mr alex tech or the learn color writing channel is suggesting they're saying look it's amazing how well this chip works and i'm totally on board with that this is a i don't get the ratio process. i think like i don't know i mean maybe this guy knows more about the apple m1 than it's i do but used, it's going to change laptops know. for a long time and that brings me to the third reason that I'm not buying this. There's another one coming. There has to be. There's an M.2 or M2 chip that's coming out later. And that M2 chip, I can only imagine how phenomenal it will be. Okay, that's a fucking brain-dead reason anyways. It's like... Uh, I, I'm not buying the fucking RTX 3090. Because they're going to make an RTX 4090. And then I'm going to look like a fucking dumbass. What? What the fuck? I'm not going to buy a Threadripper. Okay? Because they're going to make another Threadripper. Like, I'm not buying 64 gigs of memory. Alright? Because they're going to make 128 sticks tomorrow. Like, what?
then don't fucking buy it. Wait for the end too. There you go. <laughs> the whole tune changes. Like, if I buy a computer now, they're gonna make a better computer in five years later. Like, at that point, just don't buy a fucking single part. I'm not gonna buy a Lamborghini now, cause the next Lamborghini is gonna be faster. And I want the fastest. Well, mother, motherfucker, I don't know what... I don't know what, to, <laughs> what the fuck. Go get the don't buy it. I'm not going to buy a cell phone. I'm not going to buy the iPhone 12. Because they're going to make the iPhone 13. <laughs> okay. Like, I, I understand his argument. Because he's like, this is the first product in a line, right? Like the M1 processor. First thing in the line. I understand his argument. I'm sure, because you gotta understand, when you're buying the first revision of something, you're kind of like a fucking beta tester. So it's like, all right, cool. It's the first ARM processor, you know? And I, his argument is probably the M2 is gonna be like fucking 10 times better. And we saw that with the RTX 30 series, right? Like it was just dramatically better. But it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think the argument's kind of out there, right? Like, I mean, this is the whole idea of it, right? And I, I mean, sure, if, if that's what it is, it's what it is. I think the idea of unified memories, B-RAW footage, it's like, I think a lot of that shouldn't even be a mention until you actually deal with, like, ARM-based, like, stable builds of all these tools, right? Because the idea is, if you're basing your judgment on beta code and uh, emulation, like Rosetta emulation, like x86 to ARM processor, it's like... Like, what the fuck are you doing at that point, right? Like, you're basing on, like, you know, the real shit scenario of the situation. You got to wait at least until Adobe comes out with stable code for their product on the on the M1. And then gauge from there, you know? Because it's like, that, that's that's the main problem. We're basing off of this. It's like, it's like, if I run my RTX 3090 in Linux, right? I don't have access to a lot of RTX features. I don't have access to a lot of things. And you're fucking comparing it to like, it's I, I don't get it. Like, you gotta you gotta really look at this stuff when everything is there for scratch, right? <clears throat> I think I think that's what it comes down to. You know, honestly, this guy doesn't seem like his ratio. Like, I'm sure people did it because he's like, it's one of those you know, fuck Apple videos, and like, I'm sure that's what it is. So a bunch of assumptions without an actual test. It I don't know. It's whatever. It's a five minute video on whatever. I don't care. Uh, let's go look at Linus's tech tip video because I want to see M1 Mac. And then, we'll, and then we'll look at the Final Fantasy running because I haven't even tried it. Apple made a big mistake. Wait, which one should I click? <laughs> which, one should, which one should I click? I'm wondering. I can't type. Which one should I click? The second or the first one? What are we doing? Which one did he test on? The first one? Okay. Apple has a problem. See these? The new M1 MacBook Pro and MacBook Air are outstanding. Their performance almost lives up to Apple's extraordinary claims. Their look and feel. I bet is the big mistake is that the fucking laptop wasn't in the in the highest end, like highest like I bet the big mistake, I'm just gonna call it, is that they didn't they put the M1 in the thirteen inch, not the sixteen inch one, I bet. Reassuringly Apple grade. Their battery life is, simply put, exemplary, and the transition from x86 to ARM, so far at least, has gone shockingly smoothly. Linus, you might say. Those don't really sound like problems. And they're not, for you. You gotta pay attention. I said Apple has a problem, because it's gonna be really hard to one-up what they've done here. <laughs> oh, that's the problem? Apple did too good of a fucking job. Linus, yeah, don't you dare let Apple do something it. good. Honey is the free-to-use browser extension that helps you Sorry, I haven't like fucking I have speakers on sites. Get it today at joinhoney.com. I fucking love Linus. We did determine in our Mac Mini review that you cannot expand that device using an external graphics card. We followed up our testing with a 10 gig network card and found that when we ran that in our Razer Core X, the Thunderbolt-like external PCI Express functionality was working just fine. So it's definitely down to just a GPU compatibility thing. 
The Magic Keyboard style switches remain far superior to the fatally flawed butterfly switches that were found on all but the most recent Intel MacBooks since 2016, and both the Air and the Pro are an absolute delight to type on and offer quick biometric authentication through the Touch ID sensor in the power button. The only difference in the keyboard is the touch. Bro, come on, man. Put that face ID shit. Fit or hate it, you're not getting one if you buy an M1 Air, and you are definitely getting one if you pony up the extra three hundred dollars. <laughs> is that is that really worth the three hundred bucks? Is that really worth the three hundred dollars? I don't think so. And that difference in price. It's a pretty tough pill to swallow when you consider how close these machines appear on paper, other than the touch bar. But the keyword is, of course, close. There are some differences. Aside from its lack of active cooling, the baseline MacBook Air only has seven GPU cores, with the upgraded eight core version like ours costing an extra 50 bucks if you factor in the cost of the bigger SSD that it also includes. That kind of makes it a Sure, why not upgrade, if you've got any desire for 512 gigs or more storage. But if not, you're just going to have to swallow it anyway if you need the extra GPU power that you can otherwise only get with the Pro. And this inflexibility uh, I want to see the test. is one of the prices that we pay. Your MacBook is a much thicker gaming machine. Wait, let's see this. It's weight class. So what is he comparing it with? Hold on. Ryzen, Ryzen, i7, 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 M1. Okay, so he's got some top-end motherfucking things in comparison. Jesus Christ. Uh, M okay, let's see. It gets too fast to compare to anything in its weight class. Spoiler alert, by the way. It does. In Cinebench R23, the only laptop in this lineup capable of beating either MacBook is a much, much thicker gaming machine. Jesus Christ, the Omen was the only thing? That's fucking badass, dude. Jesus Christ. I mean, I know that I crushed it, but like that's that's a that's a much more that's a big motherfucker. And even it doesn't win the single threaded performance crown. Even the fuck? The fuck? <laughs> what? Holy shit. A 10 minute run. The MacBook Pro's performance remained rock solid. While the HP Omen, with its much beefier cooling working noticeably harder, dropped over a hundred points. Bro, even the air stands up with the fucking pro. Fuck the cooling fan shit. Look at the look it stands up. What? Unlike its bigger cousin, the oh my god. Did throttle, but it still managed to stay well clear of anything else in its weight class. Handbrake again shows our M1 Max outperforming their X86 counterparts by nearly double in software encoding. Seriously, guys, it's not even close. Lower is bet. Oh my god, the only thing winning is the Omen, dude. No, this is where the pro. This is where the pro shines, kind of. Three times as long, and as for hardware encoding, again we see the M1 encoding blocks doing their job. The fuck? What, dude? Heckin' Mac, dude? The fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> Holy shit, they got the craziest hardware encoder imaginable. What in the fuck, man? And then some beating out both Intel and AMD. That's just insanity. 100% and this was surprising. Even beating out NVENC in H265. For giggles, we ran Geekbench since That's what all the cool kids are running, and if it's to be believed, the only CPU with any hope of matching the M1's multi-threaded performance is a Ryzen 7 8-core. It is a good thing we put the Omen in there. The GPU, meanwhile, soundly destroys both the AMD and Intel I mean, fair enough. What does this thing have? What does the Omen have in it again? Let me see. Yeah, an RTX 2060. Like, not even a fucking... That's not even like a... Is it, that's probably like a desktop grade one or something? Fuck me. Intel competition. Yeah, a 2060 roughly desktop grade one, or is it a mobile one? It's not even a mobile grade one, is it? Is it 2060M or like just straight 2060? Yeah, no shit that's going to win. Moving on to non-native tests using Rosetta. Adobe Creative Cloud presented... Oh, okay. The only one winning it. Not only the Dude, not finish. Did not finish. <laughs> oh, no. 
Oh fuck me no. It and Premiere Pro also failed to run on our HP Envy due to its mere 8 gigs of memory. We suspect that Photoshop performance probably suffered as well. Still though, we were able to at least observe that even running in Rosetta, and this is non-native code, the M1 MacBooks both managed to smoke the Dog, whatever they did with Rosetta is just god tier. The M1 MacBook Air manages to triple the speed of its predecessor and run 8 to 9 minutes faster than its x86 competitors. Why would you now get this? <laughs> this is fucking amazing. For the no price, dude, how much did you see HP Omen 15? In price, hold on. Is this the one? Let me just get a rough price. That sounds that sounds like the thickest fucking laptop in the world though. I don't know. Come on, Linus. That that's not the thickest bastard I've seen. To fuck a thousand? Am I uh Am I losing it? Bro, that's this ain't the same one. This ain't the same laptop. No, this ain't the same laptop. He had a Ryzen one. Which 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 is the Ryzen though? That's an i5. Where's the fucking Ryzen? Jesus Christ, dude. They're Is this the one Ryzen 7? Ooh. I know mean, I'm on a US site, but it's like I don't even know which one he's using. Which one was it? Ryzen 7 4800, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 hold. So hold on, wait. If we're going to go with that, that would make it so that. No, not that one either. So that would, that would probably make it this one, right? The one that we highlighted? No, but that's got like 8 gigs of memory. That's like the closest thing. That's not so fucking bad for 1100? Shit. For 1100? That ain't, that ain't too bad. That ain't, that ain't too bad for a laptop like that. Where the XPS 13's I still don't believe it's the same one. Wait, yeah, yeah, wait. The YouTube description might have it. Hold on a second. HP Omen on Newegg. Let me see how much. That's the thing. So glad Linus does it. Well, that just fucking helped me a lot. It's not even the same GPU, is it? Linus! Hold on. Let's check the uh, Amazon link. Bro, this is all just dog shit. <laughs> well, that was a waste of my fucking time. Across the board, while the others languished at about half of the performance or even less. On that subject, I mean, we can't talk about graphics cores without talking about and found that our MacBooks managed double or. Okay, so obviously this thing fucking spanked at 1080p. Obviously, because it has a fucking GPU. 52, 53 FPS ain't too bad. That's on low settings, though. That ain't bad, though. That ain't bad. I mean, that's fucking playable. You can, you know, you can stick it on the. Yeah, that's playable. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at thirty. You're still getting better performance than Stadia, so. All right. By default, our MacBook Pro at full synthetic load reaches ninety degrees and does throttle, with the fan ramping up to about thirty-five hundred RPM, or roughly half speed. Running Prime ninety-five on this. Tomb Raider is demanding, is it? There are two important notes here. I mean, it does look really good. As so. we've seen, that throttling clearly didn't have a measurable impact on performance. And two, these core sensors that we're reading shouldn't say pretend any serious reliability Ooh. problems. But between 80 and peace of mind, top fan that they can. It's a different approach altogether, though. And after it reaches an. So what I'm getting is that this this laptop, the first attempt is really fucking good. The first attempt is really good. But the generation of Macs. 
two chassis designs. I have to say, this is this is the I'm 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 understanding what it's like to be a Mac user now. Shit, man. But for those who are willing to pay the Apple tax, well, you're only sort of paying one because you're getting a much faster computer with a higher resolution screen, a more spacious palm rest, and a better trackpad. Plus. Arguably superior expansion. Thanks yeah, but before. dude, the Apple tax, I think I agree with Linux. The Apple tax, man, it's not so bad. The Apple tax in this case isn't so bad. I mean, I haven't used a MacBook. Um, I haven't used a MacBook really ever. But like the, uh, the fucking, the new screens they have, aren't they better than the fucking, than most desktop computer screens as well? Like their screens are really good, right? Like Apple, like retina displays. So it's like, I'd pay the extra. That's that's not a bad price, dude. <laughs> yeah, Apple Tax is okay. Yeah, the trackpads that they make are fucking god tier. So impressive, impressive. Give give them the credit, man. Give them give Apple its fucking reward for now. Watch the next M1X or M2 or whatever. Just be god tier, bro. All right, so I haven't really seen Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition. This is one of the most demanding fucking PC games out there. How will it run on Linux? Certainly processing the fucking shaders real fast. Let's run a Windows Edition game under Linux, and then I can fucking end the stream and probably get some food. I mean, the Vulcan shaders are processing pretty fucking fast for for all this. Now, this is at a 1080p, so I'm certainly not using my graphic card to the fucking full extent that I should. Wait. This is what I need. Wait, close. Mango HUD, play. And let's go. I mean, I can keep the bot up on Twitch. We didn't say, I didn't say anything fucking bad or whatever. Okay, so we're funneling it through DXVK. That's a lot of stutter on the top left. Cool, cool. Oh. Oh, it doesn't really affect memory, though. Linux is pretty compatible with a lot of fucking hardware. You're in good hands. Whoa. I love this game's fucking title track. Forget. Let's, uh, no. 120 is fine. Resolution, preset, highest, custom. Let's enable all the NVIDIA fucking effects that destroy the frame rate. Please tell me I have a save file. God, dude, wait. Let me listen to this track. Hold on. It's so fucking good. God, dude, this track is so good. God damn. Can I be real? When I got to the end of this game, whoever got to the end of it, I actually legit fucking cried. It was legit, legit fucking cried when I got to the end of this game, man. I'm not going to spoil it, but you guys know the final campfire scene, right? Oh, fuck, bro. Every time I think about... Dude! Dude, the campfire scene, man. Fuck me. Remember when you have to pick a photo? Remember, remember when the game tells you to pick a photo? Fuck, man. I don't want to think about it. It's just too much. That shit hurts a man. When you have to, when you have, when they make you pick the photo. No, dude.
Dude, anybody, like, I met so many dudes who were like, yeah, Final Fantasy 15 is a terrible fucking game. I'm like, all right, dude. Okay. What's up with the hyperboles these days, bro? <laughs> FF15 was great. Shit, man. FF15, I fucking enjoyed every bit of it. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking... Okay, the stutter there. Oh, but that that's compilation stutter. So, this is gonna get better as time... Yeah, okay, so... It's compiling shaders, so if... It, after, like, five minutes in this area, it's not gonna fucking have this issue. See, like, it stopped a bit. What? What the fuck? Bro, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. This is on max settings, too. That's like a fucking sharp 60. Okay, it, it's it, it hitches here. Oh, dude, look look at look at that screen space reflection in the distance. Look at the look at like you see the you see the reflection in the water. Now it's gone, but it's back. Oh, but it's gone. <laughs> dude, life without ray tracing. Man, Could it be me? Lose the jacket. <laughs> Display. Wait, what happens if you just slap V-Sync off? <laughs> wait, wait, no fucking way, dude. No, look at the FPS counter. Holy shit. What in the flying fuck was that? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I wasn't pulling a frame rate this high even on Windows 10. The fuck? Yeah, it's 1080p, but like, shit, dude. She. This bites. How am I supposed to make my deliveries? That's not so bad, dude. The stutter, I, you have to get kind of used to the stutter a little bit, but shit, dude. My GPU's getting fucked, but I'm pretty sure it's because it's running in the Vulcan. Welcome uh, to engine. Golden Key. So what happened to the what happened to the lighting here, game? I'm afraid you're out of luck. Are we? The boats bring You know it's fucking hilarious cuz the 3090 well, still has like I think an abstraction layer with forth. DXVK so it's not even like and What's your story? Ooh, man, my computer getting railed I'm right real. now. What's the you thermals on the Ooh. It's kind of cool, closed, I guess. I'm skeptical, but I won't discount the possibility. I say we go check it out for ourselves. Any ideas for accommodation? I'm getting amazed because I run certain games like this and it's just kind of wild seeing how DXVK has evolved from like nothing to like this fucking look like even if it's stuttering and I know like some people like it stutters it stutters it stutters I'm still impressed with how impressive the DXVK open source community is and the work put in by Valve with Proton that this runs so well. Is it getting warm? No, my I have a I have a really good cooling system in my computer, so it's not it's not gonna get too bad. My GPU is getting the fucking getting up getting the pop. That is so fucking cool. All right, boys and girls, I'm gonna head out. It's fucking three in the morning, and I've streamed for God knows how long. I'm gonna end it. I'm going to call it a day. Thank you all for showing up. This is me, Muda, and uh, I'm out.